Good afternoon and welcome to the September 9, 2020 session of the Board of Zoning Appeals. In a moment, we will commence a call of our calendar, a copy of which can be found on the town's website. This is a virtual hearing pursuant to 20217 of uh, executive order that you can participate and join in by utilizing the address www.brookhaven ny.gov backslash join or by utilizing the virtual hearing link found on the Board of Zoning Appeals page of the town's website. Applications before the board will consist of three parts, the presentation of the applicant, the testimony of those wishing to speak on the application, and then finally the rebuttal testimony of the applicant limited to those issues brought on by persons speaking in opposition. At the conclusion of each of the applications, this board will take one of three actions. <clears throat> we can decide the application today by a motion to grant or to deny the relief requested. Alternatively, we can close the public hearing and place the matter on our decision calendar. Finally, we could hold the public hearing open to a future date. If the motion that you hear at the end of your case is a motion to grant the application, what this means is at least in part the relief that you seek from this board has been granted. A grant letter will issue from the Board of Appeals Office within seven to 10 business days. That grant letter will be sent directly to the applicant. That is a document that you sure. return to the building department with to continue with your endeavor. If the motion that you hear at the end of your case is a motion to close the public hearing and place the matter on decision calendar. What this means is your public hearing was held today and the record is now closed for decision. The board has under the code 62 days in which to render a decision. Once that decision is rendered, the applicant will be notified directly. Those interested in viewing a decision, viewing the decision or learning or, or obtaining a copy of it can do so by access, accessing it off of the town's website under the agenda and calendar links for the Board of Zoning Appeals once that decision has been filed with the town clerk. Finally, if the motion that you hear is a motion to hold the public hearing open to a future date, this occurs when either an applicant has not met conditions precedent to the relief requested, or maybe more commonly where the board requires additional information before we can decide the application. In this instance, the public hearing record is held open to a future date. On that future date, the required information is made part of the record, and then the matter closed for decision. I want to remind all of you that when joining and or participating in this meeting, you must name yourself with your name and the application number that you have interest in. Um, as you can tell, we have a number of cases on our calendar today. Um, you must indicate the case number for us to determine which application to bring you up um, to participate in the hearing. So please do so. Uh, and I thank you for your attention. Please stand with me for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Good afternoon again. Welcome to the September 9, 2020 session of the Board of Zoning Appeals. May we have roll call. Board members, James Mazzarella. Present. Charles Lazarou. Present. Rick Cunha. Present. Ronald Lindsay. Uh, present. Uh, Deputy Chair James Wisdom. Present. Chairman Paul DeChance. Present. Uh, as I see it, uh, there are several motions from adjourning cases on today's calendar. In a moment, we will, um, we will make the motions to adjourn the requested cases. If any of you are here and attempting to participate uh, regarding one of the cases that are being adjourned, please use the chat and or um, uh, Q&A section of the program and uh, we will provide you with inf the information that we have. Case number nine, Yocasta Prozo, October 7th. Case number 11, IPA Asset Management LLC, October 7th. Cases 45 through 46 of July 15th, 2020, Werner and Lorenzo, October 7th. And number 12 of August 12th, 2020, Joseph and Linda Panico, October 7th. Does the board have that motion? No motion. Motion and second amendment made all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. I will note for the record that I see a number of you in the chat section advising us which case you um, are here to um, participate in. Please also, though, rename yourself with that case number for ease um, of uh, identifying where we should place you during the hearing. 
Thank you. We're going to commence this meeting then with case number one. Case number one, Andre Ordige, 19 Sharon Drive Quorum. Property is located on the east side of Sharon Drive, 202 feet south of Acadia Place Quorum. Applicant requests side yard variance for existing cellar entrance, exceeding the five foot permitted encroachment, 11.2 feet. Mr. Chair. Mr. Vega. I have Mitch Brendel for the applicant. Very good. <clears throat> Mr. Brendel, we could see you. If you can unmute yourself, we should be able to hear you then. Uh, no, you, you did it and then it went back to mute. Let's try that again. Very Got good. It. Uh, you got it now. Uh, All right. Please give your attention to the board's attorney to be sworn. Absolutely. Please tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth, so help you. I do. Let's start with your name and address, please, and your affiliation to the application. Good evening, Mitch uh, Brendel, Integrity Expediting. I am agent for the applicant. My address is 1717 North Ocean Avenue, Suite F, Medford, New York, 11763. Thank you, Mr. Brendel. Good to see you. It appears yeah. from the board that there's a cellar entrance um, at this parcel that requires variance relief. Tell us a little bit about it, please. So for this cellar entrance, uh, as far as the, the homeowner was concerned, the main detail about it is its pre-existence to their purchase of the home in 2004. So there is a finished cellar, which we are uh, applying for the building permit for, and as well as the uh, cellar entrance, which was predates their ownership of the home in 2004. Uh, it's 11.2 foot encroachment off of the house. Uh, instead of the five feet, uh, it would leave a nine foot side yard set back off of the house. And it would require some minor reconstruction to make sure that the rise and run is uh, accurate to code. But other than that, uh, reconstructing the entire staircase uh, in a different format would incur a significant uh, cost for the homeowner. Thank you, Mr. Brendel. Questions from the board? The chairman. Uh, Mr. Mazzarella. How are you, Mr. Brendel? Good. How about yourself? Very, very good. So, um, so this is your, your prototypical concrete uh, walk down. Yeah. I imagine uh, uh, built with uh, drainage down the bottom when you um, reach. And, and my question, I guess, um, is why, um, you know, why the length? Um, is it because it's, um, it's less of a decline or how did it end up to be 11-2 uh, protruding out? There, what it appears to be is that there was the risers, the rise and the run are not equal on this staircase, and there wouldn't need to be. Um, well, in order to meet the three foot landing and get up to a six foot three height from the bottom up to grade, that would be the, the size. I don't know if you had gotten to see the plans at all but to to make enough space for the landing on the bottom of the staircase and reach a grade that would be within the current 11.2 there would have to be some minor reconstruction of the actual risers themselves but yes I guess my only concern would be um, and you're saying that this, the, the, the depth, I guess, and the steps themselves are, are unequal at this point? That is correct. And um, so what, what type of mitigation is going to happen at this point? Uh, if granted by the board, there would be um, some minor demolition of a few of the grades that they would all be made to be equal to 10 inch, uh, 10 inch, uh, 10 by seven, seven high and 10 deep. Okay, I understand. And I guess that whatever uh, 
code there is as far as railings and whatnot uh, that will be taken care that of. That is correct. A guardrail would be placed on the side, handrail would be placed uh, accordingly, gotcha. and sufficient space for the landing and dry well. Okay. I have no further questions, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Mazzarella. Is there anything further from the board? Do we have any uh, persons wishing to speak or do we have any written comment on the application? Mr. Chair, I have no speakers as of this moment. Thank you. Uh, if there's nothing further, then I'll ask the board for a motion. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to grant the application as submitted type two. Yeah. Motion is Thank by you. Mr. Mazzarella, seconded by Mr. Lindsay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion Mr. Carries. Chairman, Thank I'm going to abstain. I only heard part of it. The record will reflect that Mr. Berkson abstained. The motion carries six in favor with one abstention. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Board. Case number two, author D'Antonio, 8 Summerfield Drive, Holtzville. Property is located on the east side of Summerfield Drive, 107 feet north of Lavender Lane, Holtzville. Applicant requests rear yard and side yard variances for existing shed. Mr. Chair. Mr. Vega. I have a Joe Walker for the applicant. Thank you. Hello. Yes, Mr. Walker, can you hear us? Yes, sir. Good afternoon. Let me ask you to give your attention, please, to the board's attorney to be sworn. Mr. Swear, tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. I do. Very good, sir. Let's start with your name and address and your affiliation to the application, please. Uh, Joseph Walker, 270 Ronkonkoma Avenue, Ronkonkoma, New York, 11779, agent for the owner. Thank you. The board sees that you're here for relief concerning uh, an existing shed at the parcel. What would you like to tell us? Um, we uh, secured a permit for the uh, roofed over patio and upon presentation of the information to the building department to secure the CO, it was pointed out that the shed was uh, non-compliant. And uh, so we uh, wanted to seek a variance for the shed and um, in, in, with the ultimate goal of securing a, uh, a CO for the roof over uh, patio and the shed. Um, we feel that the, the shed is consistent with other things that are in the neighborhood. The degree of relaxation isn't uh, significant. Uh, the shed is being used for uh, shed type items, which I provided pictures to show. No one's living there or anything of that nature. And uh, the, the owner did indicate that when the shed was installed, he thought that he had installed it to be compliant with the town regulation. So uh, we, we hope that the board would look at the application favorably. If you'd like to make a stipulation that upon the uh, demise of the shed, if, there was, if it was ever to be replaced, that we would make it compliant at that point. Thank you, sir. Questions from the board? Mr. Chair. Mr. Wisdom. How long has the shed been sitting there? Uh, the shed has been there at least for a couple of years that I know of. It's, I think it's there for two or three years. I can't give you an exact date on that. And are there any other sheds in the neighborhood that is um, similar in size and also uh, with the side backs? Um, you know, that's, that's a very good question. It is a private gated neighborhood. So when you go in there, you sign in. And the people are a little um, um, sensitive, let's say, given today's circumstances about someone going on their property and, um, you know, taking pictures or that kind of thing. So um, I, I think there are other sheds in the neighborhood. I, I can't give you exact addresses because I was not able to go on somebody's property and actually ascertain it in person, take a picture. So it's not an eyesore or and it conforms to the neighborhood? Oh, no, it's not a nice one. You can see I, I submitted photographs, uh, four by sixes, as well as I, I emailed the, the secretary, uh, Lori, this morning with some photographs. You can, the, the shed is well maintained, um, and, and there's just shed type items in there. And the, the homeowner is very meticulous about the property. You, you can see from some of the pictures. And um, it's. Jimmy, I'm holding the picture up. 
that's the picture. Oh, okay. Oh, I see it. All right, so that's not intrusive. Then it's how high is that? You know? Um, yeah, I could. Have there been any complaints from the neighbors or anything like that? No, no complaints. There's been no, no one. We sent out the notices. The the homeowner knows the neighbors, and no one has offered any you know re ideas of rejection or or. And there and there are all the sheds in the neighborhood. Yes, I have nothing further. Thank you, Mr. Wisdom. Is there anything further from the uh, from the board? Chair, make a motion to gra uh, grant the application type bill. All right, there's a motion on the table to grant the application as a type two action by Mr. Wisdom. Before I ask for a second, do we have any other persons wishing to communicate here? Yeah, I, I do. Mr. Mr. Chairman? Mr. Lazarou, yes. Yes, um, there is no indication unless I fell asleep. The distances from the, the uh, uh, shed, is that what I read as four foot seven north and 11.75 feet? West? Correct. Those are the distances from? No other questions. I am, um, and I, I'm sorry, Mr. Lazaro, I hesitated there because I think I saw 6.9 west yes. and 4.7 north. The 11.75 was the um, dimension of the the uh, the frame shed. Well, so yeah. just so the board is aware, almost 6.9 west and 4.7 north. If there's nothing further on the application, we do have an outstanding motion to grant as a type two action. Is there a second? Second. second. Motion and second. Motion made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Aye. Thank you. Case number three, Patrick and Robin McCarran, 7 Ashland Street, Mount Sinai, located on the east side of Ashland Street, 420 feet south of Mount Sinai, Coram Road, Mount Sinai. Applicant requests rear yard and side yard variances for proposing ground swimming pool, side yard variance for proposed detached garage to be located in the required side yard. <clears throat> Mr. Chairman. Mr. Vega. I have Diane Bose for the applicant. I Thank also you. have the applicant, Robin McCarran. All right. Why don't I'd we like bring... to recuse. Thank you. The record will reflect that Mr. Cunha is recused on the application. Mr. Vega, let's bring up Ms. Moje initially. She is here. Uh, Ms. Moje, can, uh, we can see you. Can you hear us? Yes, I can. can you Very good. Me? We can hear you. Let's start with by um, having you sworn um, by the town the board attorney. It's always for the truth, the whole truth, not the truth. How do you like that? Yes. You're an important lady. All right. So I um, do I have the McCarrens on because I hear background talking. I don't have the McCarrens on. Ms. Moshe, apparently your oh their your clients are here. Um, did, did you wish? Fine. Did you wish? Well, are they participating or are we here to uh, I, I think if there's any questions that um, I can't answer, they're there to, um, you know, enhance that, um, you know, unless they have something that they'd like to add. All right. Before you start, let me just, um, Ms. Uh, is it Robin McCarran? Is that who um, is with us? Can you yes. hear us? Very good. Um, uh, were you here just to view or did you want to participate with, um, yeah, with your representative? All right. So um, what I'm going to ask you to do is just put yourself on mute because with the background noise coming from you, it will be difficult to, to maintain. Um, very good. So Ms. Moje, you've been sworn. Let's start with your, uh, your name, address, and affiliation to the application. Diane Moje, DNI Expediting Services with offices located at 779 Horseblock Road in Farmingville for the applicant, um, Mr. and Mrs. McCarran. Uh, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, we're before the board today, subject premises having approximately 125 feet of frontage by 97.5 feet in depth. We're seeking permission to uh, construct a proposed in-ground swimming pool that would sit approximately six feet from the uh, side and rear property line. Um, and in addition to that, the applicants have sought permission to construct 
a detached frame garage that would be um, 20 by 20 that would sit in the side yard uh, would be no higher than 14 feet and would have a side yard setback equivalent to the pool of six feet. Um, as you can see, there is a certificate of occupancy for the house. There is no garage in this house. Uh, when uh, they were told that they would need a variance for their pool, they uh, wanted to uh, use the opportunity to pursue a detached frame garage in addition uh, to the in-ground swimming pool. In viewing the aerial, you'll see that the area is comprised of a lot of a uh, lot similar in size. Some are much smaller. There are homes that have been added onto and have added attached garages. Um, there are many pools in the area. As a matter of fact, diagonally across the street from the subject premises is a pool located in the side yard. Anywhere that we would be to put a pool or a detached garage on this property essentially would require variance and relief from this board. I would suggest that the granting of this variance would not create any detriment to the surrounding area, nor would it impair the values thereof. I think it would in fact conform. Um, and I would just point out that uh, using your aerial um, uh, lot number four and number eight both have pools uh, that sit close to the rear and side property line, similarly placed as the subject premises, as well as 14, number eight, um, and that's just in the immediate area. So um, if the board has any questions, I'd be happy to try and address them at this time. Thank you, Ms. Moje. So the, the relief requested is for two structures and they are both proposed here. Yes, they are both proposed. Unusual, and, I know, but yeah. <laughs> when it when it comes to the detached garage, um, you the applicant does not seek relief either for square footage or for height because, as you're proposing, it's right. at 14 feet height and right. 400 square feet, where 600 would be permitted. Right. So, so the, the only reason for relief here is that uh, the the detached right. garage is being placed not in not behind the foundation of the house, but rather to the in the side yard. So that yeah. the re the relief is side yard relief for an otherwise conforming detached garage. Absolutely, and as you'll notice also on the survey that there's an oil tank in the um, AC unit is located on that side of the house. So uh, that would prevent us from scooching it any closer to increase that side yard. All right, in terms of the pool, we do see where the pool is located. It's the paver patio to the rear of this house that dictate the location of the pool and therefore um, right. at, at least one of the, the, the requests for relief. Um, right. and, and I did look at the aerial when Mr. Vega brought it up. It did show us some uh, a tight rear yard on one of the pools. I think it was across the street at number eight. I don't see. I don't see number, number four. Eight is inside number four is right where. Oh, I see where the four is. Do you know? Do you and know? If you scroll down. Number eight is also very uh, tight, in, and that goes across the back of the house. And in terms of um, in terms of those two pools, at four Hawthorne and eight Ashland, mm -hmm. um, I see that they're in side yards and and uh, rear yards with with limited setbacks. Correct. Do you, did your office determine whether or not any of those pools exist pursuant to board action? No problem. In this instance, I do see the paver patio location and as a result, the six foot side yard um, is, is dictated there. But in terms of the rear yard setback at six, you're still holding what you may be showing us as 17 feet to the house and it is off right. to the side of the paver patio. Right. Um, that rear yard setback, did you talk to the applicant about any willingness to move it um, further away from the rear yard? I would, if they are present, I think that um, they can answer that. Um, I, I would think that there's might be a little bit of room unless there's something that would prohibit it at this point. All right, I mean, certainly I see at least uh, an eight foot setback, but um, if you'd like to bring them on, uh, Ms. McCarran, you've unmuted yourself. So I think that you must have something to say. I'm gonna have you first sworn by our uh, board attorney, uh, John Doyle. So if you could raise your right hand, please. I solemnly swear to tell the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth. So I, didn't, I didn't hear you. Was that, was yes, that I do? Yes. Okay. Yes. And your name and address, please. Robin McCarran, 7 Ashland Street in Mount Sinai. All right. Are you holding that, uh, that uh, camera yourself? Yes. All right. It seems to be going up and down. I wondered. Um, what would, uh, thank you for coming first. And let's, uh, what would you like to t uh, say or add to this discussion about where the, your pool is proposed to be? Um, I mean, I really have no discussion. Um, you know, just 
it's like a lagoon type thing. So it's just going to wrap around. Yes. Uh, you know, I, 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 in, in looking at it wrapping around, I thought that it might also um, still meet your needs um, if it had a, a larger rear yard setback. Do you have anything that you want the board to understand in that regard? I don't, you know, I'm not understanding. I don't know, maybe Diane would be able to help. Mr. Chairman, if I could, I just yes. want to suggest that, um, Mrs. McCarran, if we, if we increase the rear yard by two feet, um, then uh, that would reduce the distance from the corner of the house to the pool at 15 feet. And it would still essentially be in the same area that you want it. There would be a two foot difference. I would suggest that it's a minor change and it would increase the rear yard and be helpful to your application. Okay. Diane, you would know better than me, I, you know. So we'll amend our application to make okay. it an eight foot rear yard setback. Thank um, you, Ms. Okay, we, asked, we asked for six, we're correct. Yes. So we're, they'll, they want eight now, okay, okay. okay. Thank you, Ms. McCarran. Does the board have that motion? So moved. Motion second have been made. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Ms. Moshe, was there anything further? No, um, that would be it, unless there's other, any other questions that I can answer for you. Thank you. Um, is, is there any other communication on this application, either by live panelist or written communication? Mr. Chair. Mr. Vega. Um, I had uh, somebody named CP who raised their hand. I'm not sure if they wanted to speak, but I, in the chat, I requested if they wanted to speak on this. I don't know if you want me to promote to ask. Why don't you promote and then we will ask specifically directly. Yeah. I just received on the chat, uh, it was an error, so. Okay, I saw that also. Very good, then if there's nothing further on this application, I'll ask the board for a motion. And the application type two okay. well, as, motion, as amended. Motion is by Mr. Lazaru to grant the application as amended for an eight foot rear yard. Type two action. Motion by Mr. Lazaru, seconded by Mr. Lindsay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you very much. Case number four Grace Poffenbarger, PG Builders Inc. 4949 Expressway Drive North, Lake Ronkonkoma. Property is located on the east side of Horse Block Road, 100 feet south of Ruland Avenue, Farmingville. Applicant request lot area, lot frontage, front yard setback, and rear yard variances for a proposed one family dwelling. So, Chair, I have a Michael Mor Morbillo for the applicant. Thank you, Mr. Vega. We will wait for Mr. Morabillo to be promoted. There you are. Good to see you, Michael. Let's get started with um, having you sworn. Tell him I swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you. I do. Very good. Then we'll start with your appearance and your connection to the application, please. Uh, good afternoon, uh, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. For the record, my name is Michael Morbillo. I am an uh, architect and uh, representative of the applicant, Grace Poffenbarger. My firm is Inspire Design Group. My office is located at 1650 Sycamore Avenue in Bohemia, New York. Thank you, Mr. Morabillo. As you are aware, the board's planner, Christopher Reed, reviewed this application. We have him here. We'll have him sworn and uh, give his testimony now. Chris, ready? Ready. You solemnly swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. I do. Property is located on the north side of Horse Block Road, 100 feet east of Ruin Lane in the Hamlet of Farmingville. The applicant is proposing to erect a two-story dwelling on the 9,986 square foot parcel with access to the lot intended via Horse Block Road. It is noted that the board previously heard an application to develop the lot in 2017, which was approved. Leone, case number 30 of June 7, 2017, and the board may wish to incorporate the minutes from the prior hearing. However, the board only heard a front yard setback variance with the prior applicant. 
application in that the parcel was determined to be single and separate. The proposed home in 2017 was 60 feet by 30 feet, a one-story home with 20-foot side yards and a 35-foot rear yard. And the proposed home with the subject application is now a two-story home with both conforming minimum and total side yards of 29 feet and 58 feet respectively. As per the sequel, the application is a type two action and should the board look favorably on the application once again, standard residential mitigation is recommended. All right then, Mr. Morabello, those are the comments and uh, live testimony of the board's planner. What comment did you have for the board? Uh, just to, you know, to add in there um, that we are looking, I think it was Mr. Reed had stated, uh, we are reducing some of the, the previous requests that were granted. Um, my, the applicant did not um, pursue a single and separate search uh, one sense to, you know, since the uh, ownership went directly from the previous owner. So they didn't see a need to go and uh, prepare another single and separate report. So those uh, factors, I think, still stay in effect. And I think on the surface, the requests are non substantial, and certainly we will not be having any impact on the neighborhood. So if the, the board has any uh, questions at this time, I'd be happy to answer them. Thank you. Questions from the board? Yes, Mr. Chair. Mr. Cunha. Good afternoon, Mr. Morbillo. How are you? Good. How are you? So um, I'm trying to figure out why uh, on the previous application um, you didn't have to go for a rear yard or a or side yards. Um, uh, I'm assuming that it, because it was single and separate, it fell under the small lot ordinance and there were different setbacks set at that time. That's, that's my understanding also, correct. Okay. Yeah, the and, footprint is also, I think was a little bit larger. Um, so there, there may have been a circumstance where uh, they needed to obtain, they had a 60 foot by 35 foot uh, footprint hours is uh, 20, approximately 27 by 42. So I think that had some impact on, the, on the, re the previous requests. And then certainly the single and separate eliminated some of those requests also. I'm, I'm assuming so because uh, under the previous application, you would have needed uh, even more of a rear yard variance if that was the case, because you're only proposing 23 here. Okay, yeah. um, now my second question is, are there other um, houses in the area that are two stories on similar size parcels? Yes, yeah, there's actually a lot that is uh, uh, directly to the north and certainly the neighborhood is spotted. Uh, if you looked at the aerial photograph uh, throughout with uh, a mix of uh, one and two story homes on similar size lots. Okay, and um, the Previous grant also it was grant it was a grant for a uh, for a one story home. What was the square footage of that home? Uh, my understanding was about it was uh, approximately the same area, about two thousand square feet. Um, you know the footprint measures about twenty one hundred square feet, but I believe with some ins and outs on the house it was irregular. So it was approximately the same size, however, just spread over uh, a one story area, which I feel has a greater impact than a more condensed. Uh, uh, two-story house which preserves more open space. Well, to understand then the new proposed house is going to be approximately 2,000 square feet or 2,100. Is that correct? That's correct. Yes, that's is correct. Is that with that's, garage or is that that's with in the garage? garage? Yeah. yeah, that's with the garage. The, uh, the residence itself is about 1,800 square feet and then there is uh, an approximately 240 square foot uh, attached garage. Okay, thank you very much. I appreciate you answering our questions today. No further questions, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Cunha. Is there anything further from the board? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Lazaro. Uh, Mr. Marbell. Yes. Um, the style of the house, is this a, a split or two even it's stories? High ranch. High ranch. High ranch. Yep. Okay. Um, when I look at the, uh, within the footprint of the building, uh, you're entering at, Elevation 145.3. Yes. The entrance elevation is 155. Uh, the, hmm, I think that, I believe that that is a typographic error. I believe it would be because this thing would be 10 feet off the ground for the upper, yeah. upper level. So I think you might want to correct that. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you very much. 
Sure, certainly. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Lazaro. Is there anything further from the board? Is there any further communication, either by panelists or or written communication? I have written communication. We'll take that for the record now. Okay, I have an email from uh, Gloria Rochetta. <clears throat> I'm notifying the town of my objection to the proposed application for a rear yard variance. <clears throat> Excuse me. The properties surrounding this parcel of land located at east side of Horse Block Road are much larger than 0.28 of an acre. They all have significant front footage and significant rear footage. This includes the homes on Hetty's Path, Sherry Court, and North Morris Avenue. This will drastically change the character of the neighborhood by putting a one family dwelling on the smallest lot when all the other homes are in proportion to the surrounding lots. This is the only undeveloped piece of property on the block and building a home roughly the same size as the rest of the homes will change the character of the neighborhood. It is a very beautiful neighborhood because of the size of the land each home is situated on. This will completely be out of place. The property directly to the north of this proposed dwelling, my property, is several feet below the level of the proposed dwelling. Granting this relaxed rear setback will cause damage to our existing property by water runoff, erosion, and dirt running downhill with construction right into our yard, as well as cesspool placement and drainage. Anything over, surely that will drain downhill as well. If the rear setback remains the required 60 feet, there is enough room for construction that hopefully damage will not occur. But granting additional footage and giving a larger setback than required to the rear will affect my property directly with water runoff erosion and ground damage. Property taxes in this area are currently very high. Granting this rear variance will definitely have an adverse effect and impact on the physical and environmental conditions in the neighborhood, as well as all of the other properties enjoy their privacy with many trees, vegetation, and sufficient space between neighbors. I fear that granting this variance will lower my property value in this neighborhood by building a structure that will not be in conformity with the rest of the neighborhood. While I appreciate the need and want for a builder to build a dwelling on any piece of property that is currently available, I ask the zoning board to please consider the fact that there is not too much undeveloped land left. All right, for the record, I, um, I will note that my understanding that this is a, a residentially zoned B1 residence zone requiring a 40 foot rear yard. The application is for 38.6, meaning it's short a foot and a half, 18 inches. Uh, 38.6 feet where 40 feet is required. 60 feet is required. Is it 60 feet? So is this an A1 residential zone? No, it's B1. It's a B1. B1. Mr. Chair. All right. Yes, uh, uh, Mr. Cunha, just in, in, in a minute. I'd like to see the aerial again, just concerning the size of the lots. And then Mr. Cunha, go ahead. Uh, I have a question for Mr. Morbell. Yes. Um, on-site drainage, everything on-site is going into dry wells. Is that correct? Especially That's because correct. of the pitch it a lot? That's correct. So you're catching front yard and also leaders and gutters. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. And you're just building the contour of the land is where the house is going. Um, how much of the house is going to be exposed in the rear yard? Uh, the... It's actually going to be, you know, maybe, maybe at most one to two feet, you know, de depending on the grade. We have a, uh, um, we generally have a relatively flat plateau around the house where it's going to be. I understand that the, the next block over Hetty's path drops off, but uh, uh, from the front of the property to the, uh, you know, where the garage entry level is, is one elevation 145. There's about a three and a half foot drop, uh, maybe close to four feet. Uh, from where the garage, the front of the house is to the back property line where uh, Ms. Uh, Rochetta's property is. Correct, but you're going to maintain a two foot all the way around the property, uh, around the house itself. Uh, That's right. more, more so. Now, does this have a basement as well? Uh, this house does, it does have a basement, yes, that's correct. Okay, so that, that's what's giving you the ability to keep a Put two a foot window. of yeah. top of wall to the, to the road. Okay. That is um, so with erosion control practices in place, you, you will be able to hold all uh, runoff from the neighbors? With That's the correct. Okay, no further questions, Mr. Chair. 
Thank you, Mr. Cunha. Is there anything further from the board? Mr. Chair. Mr. Vega. I have a speaker on this case. You can promote them. I have a Joanne Nussbaum. Thank you. While we're waiting, Mr. Morabello, your survey does show us a difference in elevation, but as I see at the front of the house is at about 144 or 144.5. And um, the rearmost, I think, goes down to 142. That's about th um, three, three and a half feet. Is that That's the difference correct. in elevation? That's correct. <clears throat> and the uh, appears to be a dry well in the rear. What was the purpose of that? Uh, the drywall in the rear is certainly to catch uh, uh, a couple of things, uh, uh, all of the um, uh, solid surface and the roof runoff, and uh, uh, potentially if there was any surface drainage, it would be directed towards that drywall. In, in, looking, at the in looking at the houses on either side um, of this parcel, yeah. the ones that are existing, they appear to be holding setbacks that... Um, are similar to what's requested or even more significant to the rear yard. Do you, did you get a chance to uh, identify what those are and, and how they came to be? Uh, we didn't uh, get to determine if they were through zoning board application, but we did get, we did analyze them and see that they were similar setbacks as is evident in this aerial. So, uh, and, and so meeting the character of the neighbor of the neighborhood along horse block road, uh, granted Hetty's path, uh, has larger lots, but if you continue along Horse Block and into South Coleman Road, uh, there are uh, lots of similar size with similar setbacks. So it, it is uh, somewhat of a mixed neighborhood. Horse Block uh, Road is uh, somewhat of a, ma a main road also. All right. All right. I see Ms. Nussbaum with us. Can you hear us, ma'am? Yes, I can. Very good. Let me just ask you to give your attention to, to the board's attorney, John Doyle, and he will have you sworn. I oh, swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth will help you. I do. Very good. Let's start with your name and address, please. Joanne Nussbaum, and I live at 80 Hedy's Path, Farmingville. Very good. We see where you are, um, not immediately adjacent to the rear of the dwelling, but just one house over. Um, you look to be Ms. Rochetta's neighbor. Is that correct? Yes, correct. All right. Well, what additional comment did you have for the board? Um, my comment is that I feel it's not in keeping with the neighborhood, and I, I understand it's to be a two-story dwelling, um, and just the concern that... Um, I've been living here a very long time and I just feel that it won't be in character with the neighborhood being that the trees are taken down and just encroaching on the habitat of everybody in the area. All right, thank you. For any further comment or questions from the board? No, thank you. Thank you, Ms. Nussbaum. Is there anything further from the board with regard to this application? Yes, All right, Mr. I think Chair. Mr. Cunha. I know you brought up the um the actual drainage, but there's also a dry well in the front yard as well that's connected to the back one. And uh, Mr. Morbillo, yes. what type of horse block road, what section of horse block road is this? Uh, it's, um, you're, it's, it's just north of, um, I'm sorry, it's just, it's just south of Nichols Road where that bend is. If you were to zoom out, you'll see um, oh, I, I know where it goes. Okay, it goes all the way down to the to the racquetball club or whatever it was on. Correct. On, on Correct. Yeah, almost ocean. directly across from the uh, universe, you know, from uh, Suffolk Community College also. Yes. Okay. All and right. So it's a high traffic road. Horse Block Road is like a secondary road also that uh, leads up uh, towards Middle Country Road. So it does have a fair amount of uh, traffic. It, it empties. And then it also certainly uh, runs down and connects in with uh, the east-west portion of Horse Block Road, the county road. Okay, thank you. No further questions, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Cunha. Is there anything further from the board? I'd first like to ask the board for a motion to incorporate the minutes of the 2017 proceedings regarding this parcel. So moved. Motion and second, all in favor, all in, all all in favor? Any opposed? Aye. Motion carries. Um, finally, is there a motion by the board on the application? Yes, Mr. Chair, I'd like to close and hold. Motion is by Mr. Cunha to close and hold. Seconded by Second. Mr. Lazarou. All in favor? Aye. Any Aye. opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you.
Case number five, James Rocco, 15 Miller Place, Yapank Road, Middle Island. Property is located on the east side of Miller Place, Yapank Road, 1,059 feet south of Whiskey Road, Middle Island. Applicant requests height variance for three existing retaining walls located less than the required double distance from each other and varying in height from grade to four foot high and 1.9 feet high to 3.8 foot high, a total height of 7.3 feet high. Mr. Chair, I have Kevin Kilfoyle for the applicant. Thank you. Mr. Guilfoyle, are you with us yet? There you go. We can now see you, Mr. Guilfoyle. Can you hear us? Well, I don't have, um, I don't have, uh, any ability to hear you yet, Kevin? Did you try to unmute yourself? Okay, uh, how's that? I think that's working now. Okay, great. All right, so there's some reverb there. Is there he's, more than he's 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 actually on more than one computer? Yeah, good afternoon, Mr. Chairman. All right, so okay. Kevin, are, are, do you have more than one computer? I kept on? losing an internet connection here. I'm over in Rock Arkham. Optimum has not been great the past couple of weeks. In any right. event, we can, uh, hear, I we can to, hear you. I we can to, hear you now. Nope. Let, let's um, let's just have you sworn first, and we'll take your appearance then. Mr. Chairman. Yes. I solemnly swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Uh, Mr. Gilfoyle, you um, you you've muted yourself. Is there a way? Can you see how? Do, uh, there you go. Can you? Are you back? Oh, you you actually came back and left again. Kevin, try to unmute yourself one more time for us. <clears throat> Kevin, you're still in. Uh, oh, okay. That, there you go. That? That's that's I'm good. I'm having some difficulty. That's good all good. Good afternoon, Mr. Chairman. Kevin, I'm not, sure, I'm, not <laughs> Kevin, Kevin, I'm not sure if we had you sworn yet, so let's just start there. Okay. So I'm swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth will help you. Yes, I do. Very good. Let's just start with your appearance for the record and your affiliation to the application. Yes, good afternoon, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Kevin Guilfoyle of Wild and Wide Permit Services, 86 Center Street, Ron Conkham, New York, here for the owners. Thank you, Mr. Guilfoyle. Good to see you. What would you like to tell us about this application? Mr. Chairman, uh, I'm here, and originally uh, my clients had hired me to secure uh, a certificate of occupancy for an existing fireplace and a outside cellar entrance that should have been on the previous COs but weren't. And uh, while we were speaking about it and had the inspection done for the CEUs, uh, the inspector noticed that the existing retaining wall was not covered on any of the previous COs. Now, if we look at the survey, the in-ground pool was first CO'd back in 1977, and I have a survey to that effect showing the existing retaining wall, not the existing retaining wall, but a previously constructed retaining wall in that location. On or about 2017, the previous owners had installed a, reinstalled a new retaining wall. And at that time, uh, it was the building department suggested I had to go back to planning as well as zoning for the overall height of this wall. Um, the existing wall that was there served as a buttress for the in-ground pool because we had a naturally sloping uh, ground towards uh, the pond area. It backs up to a pond area. And uh, back then when it was built, uh, the appropriate wetlands permits were taken out, but again, no mention of the retaining wall at that time. Uh, since that time, uh, we applied for the Zoning Board of Appeals hearing, paid roughly about $2,000 in penalties on this, and 
I imagine because it's a tiered wall, it was three times the amount of penalties. But, Mr. Chairman, if you could maybe explain to me the code as far as a retaining wall in the rear yard, I thought it was just total height, or is it? Well, the, the, the code as it, it pertains to retaining walls has um, developed over recent years. And the latest version is under which you've been denied. So the, the walls require a certain distance from one another. And if they're not that certain required distance, they count them as one height. In this okay. instance, um, they denied you. And I thought the, the language was interesting because I've never seen the language um, as it is here. And it, it was less than the required double distance from each other. Um, so I'm going to look into that uh, myself. But uh, yes, mm -hmm. uh, the short answer is that the code has developed re uh, only in the last several years concerning re uh, relief, variance re relief required for and the, and the required distances between retaining walls. And that's why you're here. Okay. Okay. In, 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 in sum summary, Mr. Chairman, the existing wall, um, well, the, the wall existed in, since 1977 and was replaced in the pretty much the same exact area uh, with newer materials. Um, it, you know, photos, I, I think you have some photos for the record of the wall. It was well constructed. And, you know, the, uh, my theory is, is that, you know, the pool would never have been allowed to be built in that location without some kind of lateral support for that, that wall, because it's, it's roughly, uh, is, 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 uh, I would say a, more than a gradual slope to that rear property line. All right, thank you. Questions or comments from board members? Yes, Mr. Chair. Mr. Lindsay. Good afternoon, everyone. Yes, good afternoon, Mr. Lindsay. Good afternoon. So when did you say the wall was built again? Um, I'm, I'm assuming the wall was built, and I assume that because I have a CO for a uh, in-ground pool from Janu uh, July 11th of 1977. Uh, that's right. when the first story issue was built in a swimming pool and cabana were all issued. Okay. And uh, I don't think there was codes for that wall back then, were there? Mm, I, I, I Honestly, I wouldn't, be, I couldn't answer that, Mr. Lindsay. A little, little weak on retaining walls. I, oh, I just think that might be one of the reasons why it wasn't on there back then. Could be. Could um, be. And what is the distance between the two walls in a walkway? That is the walkway, correct? Uh, no, there's no walkway there at all. No, it's um, it's just a, a spacing there. It looks like it's probably about three feet, maybe maybe a little less than three feet, thirty to thirty six inches between the walls. It kind of looks like it. Okay, and now yeah, no. without any pictures, it's hard for me to tell on this. It looks like it's attaching. Oh, okay. mm -hmm. What I survey. Um, so if it's been uh, that long, um, then it, did you say it was reconstructed again? Yes, in, in 2017, I believe. In 2017. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, and the inspector, I'm sure he looked at it. Correct. He was there. Now he's just making you come for a variance for it. He didn't give you any citations or anything? He didn't? No, no. Okay. I have no further questions, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Ms. Lindsay. Is there anything further from the board? All right, with regard to this application, I understand uh, the board can see from the area that there is water uh, within close proximity. The application is subject to chapter 81 of the code. Does the board have a motion? Yes, sir, I'd like to grant the application type two as presented with subject to chapter 81 of the code. Second. Motion by Mr. Lindsay, seconded by Mr. Cunha. All in favor? Uh, Aye. Any opposed? Aye. Motion carries. Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Uh, have a good day. Wait. Mr. Vega, yes? It seems I have somebody jumping in late to want to speak on this. All right. Well, why don't we hear what they have to say? Thank you. You can promote them. Mr. Okay. Gilfoyle, you should stay with us. Okay. <clears throat> we have a Tom Maltz. All yeah. right. Agrees to be able to promote much quicker through this Zoom platform. You may want to speak on case 26 and might be confused in the chat. 
I was watching. I was watching yes. your chat discussion with Mr. Moltz. Yes, it, I'm not looking to speak. All right, Mr. Moltz. Well, thank you for coming up and letting us know that. Thank you, Mr. Vega, for um, for ascertaining what the issue was. Again, we have a motion that carries. So, thank you, Mr. Gilfoyle. We'll move on to case. Thank you, Mr. Six. Chairman, members of the board. Have a good evening. Thank you. Case number six, Danielle Gordon, 68 Birch Hill Road, Mount Sinai. Property is located on the west side of Birch Hill Road, 483 feet south of Hayward Avenue, Mount Sinai. Applicant requests rear yard variance for proposed in-ground swimming pool. Mr. Chair, I have Diane Moshe for the applicant, and I also have the applicant, Danielle Gordon. Let's um, bring Ms. Moshe up. Mr. Chair, I recuse. Record will reflect that Mr. Kuhn is recused from the application. I'm back. Great to see you, Ms. Moshe. Uh, again, we have your client um, also here. I yes. left them as a panelist, uh, being able to hear the proceedings. And if you have any desire for us to bring the, uh, the um, owner up uh, for questions or whatever, just please let us know. You got it. All right, and then I'll tell, uh, I'll say, Mr. Vega, uh, if you'd like to chat with the applicant, tell them that we're hearing from Ms. Moje, and if they'd like to come up to speak, to just let you know. All right, so Ms. Moje, you've been previously been sworn. We do see that this is a request for a rear, rear yard variance for a pool. What would you like to tell us? I, just for the record, Diane Moje, DNI Expediting Services, Offices 779, Horse Block Road in Farmingville. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, the applicant is seeking a variant for an in-ground swimming pool, seeking only a rear yard variance of eight feet um, because of the location of the pool. They have uh, requested this location due to uh, the utilization of the yard and wanting to keep it close uh, to the home, um, you know, with the children being in the pool, wanting to be able to see them and, and et cetera. Um, I have uh, taken a look at the surrounding area, and um, as you can see by the aerials, the, the property at 43 Grassland Circle directly behind uh, has an in-ground pool in close proximity to the rear property line, as well as 41 Grassland Circle, um, and um, there are several others, 56 grand, Grassland Circle. Uh, 50, 64 Grassland Circle has also a tennis court and a pool in close proximity. Um, so in viewing the aerial, this really would not be out of character with the surrounding area. I'm sorry, I was looking at the aerial behind my computer. Um, and um, we uh, would suggest that uh, the, the uh, depth of the property and the fact that the house is set so far back makes it difficult. Um, if the board has any questions, I'd be happy to try and address them at this time. Thank you, Ms. Moje. Questions from the board? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Lazaro. Ms. Moje, how are you? I'm well. I hope you're well as also. I'm just doing ducky. Oh, good. Glad to hear it. <laughs> um, considering the location of this, and of course, first inkling was to say, move the suggest that you move the uh, pool as you look at the uh, site plan directly to the west in any open area but i'm sure the reply would be they're trying to preserve some backyard space absolutely is that, is that not right that is absolutely correct <laughs> all right and to say give us a little bit more room between the uh uh, the pool in the rear yard uh, would move it closer to the building and I'm inclined to say that getting any closer to the building being that it's a two-story dwelling. Right, that, that would that would put us at about eight feet from the dwelling that would be a little bit tight um, so um, in in you know, looking at it, you know, we could maybe pick up another foot if we if we moved it a little bit west because of the skew of the house. Mm -hmm. Well, the only thing I was going to say, and uh, if I can finish, was that you'd probably encroach on the structural integrity of the foundation of the building. Right. That, right. that I would say would be so. 
Other than that, I don't have any more, any further questions. Thank you. And I noticed from the aerial that was shown to us that there are many of these pools in the area. Correct. So it, it's no further detriment or any detriment to the neighborhood. Right. They all seem to be in the same location. Yep. Yep. Thank you, Mr. Lazarou. Is there anything further from the board? All right, then, uh, Ms. Moshe, if there's nothing further, I'll ask the board for a motion. Great. I would grant the application type two. Motion is Great. by Mr. Lazaro to grant as presented as a type two action. Seconded Great. by uh, Mr. Lindsay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. Have a nice evening, everyone. You too. Case number 10, Glenn and Dara Mayola, care of Andrew Malguanera, properties located on the northwest corner, Water Road, and Tall Tree Lane, Rocky Point. Applicant requests rear yard variances for existing one-story residence addition, an existing wood deck with outdoor kitchen, also side yard variance for proposed in-ground swimming pool. Mr. Chair. Mr. Vega, yes. I have Andrew Malguanera for the applicant. Thank you. Mr. Melgonaro, we can see you. Can you hear us? I can. Very good. Let's start by getting you sworn. It's all this tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Yes. Very good. Well, then let's uh, proceed with your appearance and uh, presentation. Yep. Thank you. Andrew Malgonaro, 713 Main Street, Port Jefferson, agent for the applicant. So, good evening. Uh, Ladies and gentlemen, the, uh, what we have here is uh, a couple things. One, one, we'll start with the den on the uh, property. Uh, it's been there for about eight years. Uh, my client bought the house five years ago, did not realize the den was not part of, was not legal. Um, it already did extend, as you can see, a little bit, but that someone extended it a little further out, but never legalized it. So here we are. Um, it falls in line with the characteristics of the neighborhood in Rocky Point. Uh, this is a, a large lot in Rocky Point. Um, and it doesn't uh, upset the, the, the nature of, of the area. Um, as far as the pool goes, um, requesting a side yard of seven feet, um, you know, just a stick, you know, it's, you know, that's a perfect spot on the property to put it. Um, the wires or overhead have been removed, uh, have been moved to the other side, so they're not a factor anymore. And um, again, it fits within the nature of the uh, area. And if the board has any questions, please let me know. Thank you. Questions from the board. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Bergson. So Andrew, um, the den is in is the hatch hatch correct correct marked area correct. So it did it did extend um, a little ways and it was extended upon to make the den. You know, it was a little small for uh, for den. So it's hold, it's it's holding almost ten feet at this point. Correct. Okay, and that whole other area, thirty two by twenty two, is the existing wood deck with the outdoor kitchen on it. Exactly right. And you're looking for the same side yard with respect to that, I assume. Holding, right? this, holding the same side yard and uh, yeah, ex again, existing about eight years or so. Okay, so it leaves us with the pool and the real issue there, I so assume, is the, uh, is the seven foot side yard. Correct. Right? So are there other pools with seven foot side yards in the area? And, uh, well, and wait, wait, I'm not done. Sure. Why can't we make it a little bit bigger than that? Okay. Uh, well, I mean, of course, you know, I, I want to make the board happy. So if, uh, you know, there are uh, pools that are close to the, you know, close to um, the property line across the street at 31, uh, you got 22, you know, they're right there. Um, I know seven foot's a little, a, a little tight. Um, you know, I, I mean, if the board would be happy at eight as, as, as shown, then, um, you know, I'm not going to, I'm not going to fight you too hard on that one. Well, what is, the, what is the current distance from the pool's edge to the walkway as currently exists over there? Currently, can you pull up the survey again? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's to, the walk, to the masonry walkway. Yeah, and also I noticed that it is a 22 foot wide pool. It's a pretty wide pool. <clears throat> uh, yeah, I mean, that, yeah, that's why, you know, we could, we could, we could give you the, the, you know, the eight feet if that will make the board um, you're, you're gonna you're gonna give us that. Oh, right? I'll give it. <laughs> I just want to understand what what what's I don't mean here. I don't mean like that. No, it's uh, <laughs> I will we will we'll be willing to accept that 
um, if, if the board could be so kind to, to. Well, all right. So let's just go back to the original question. Are there other pools with, let's say, an eight-foot side yard or approximately that in the area? Yes, across the street, the uh, 31. And uh, 31 definitely has within eight feet. Uh, 22 is about 10, but it's right there. Okay. Has there been any input from any of the neighbors about this, specifically the neighbor to the, I guess that would be the West, right? Yeah, there's no neighbor on that side either. Ah. That was a factor in that. I, as well. I see now. Yes. I see that's yeah. an empty, empty right. currently an empty right. lot. Right. That's why, that's why we're, you know, kind of trying to sco scooch it to seven. There's no one there um, to, to be there's impacted no. by this in any way. Uh, well, there's an owner, the owner of the property didn't, uh, hasn't objected, right? Is that right? Uh, no, yes. I have not been, I have not been given word of that. Okay. Um, all right, I have, I have, uh, do you, uh, do you want to amend your application? Is that what you're telling us? Yeah, I'll amend it for eight foot. Does the board have that motion? Um, I'll make that motion, Mr. Chairman. Motion by Mr. Bergson. Second. Second by Ms. Lindsay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed, motion carries. So then, is there anything um, further, Mr. Malganera, on your amended application, which seeks an eight foot side yard for the in proposed in Grand Pool? Uh, that's, that's perfect, thank you. If there's nothing further, uh, and we have no one wishing to speak on the application, I'll ask the board for a motion. Mr. Chairman, I move to grant the application as amended, type two. Second. Check. Thank you, appreciate it. Motion by Mr. Berkson, seconded by Mr. Lindsay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. Case number 12, Reginald and Diana Richardson, 195 Avenue B, Ronkonkoma, located on the east side of Avenue B, 325 feet north of 3rd Street, Ronkonkoma. Applicant requests side yard variance for existing pool deck. Mr. Chair. Mr. Vega. Unmute. I have Diana and Reginald Richardson. Yes. All right. I, I am hearing someone. Let's see if I can. Okay. Find... <laughs> Let's um, see if I... do you have your video on? I'm not, I don't see that uh, I see you. Okay. Stop video. Stop video. There we go. Is that it? Oh, good afternoon, sir. How are good you? Good afternoon, Chairman. Good afternoon. I'm sorry. I'm a little um not really not good with it. Oh, trust. Computer. None of us, yeah. none of us are good with it. So you're, you're, you're in the same boat as us. Right. I'm going to ask you just to take a moment and give your attention to the board's attorney. We'll get you sworn. Yes, solemnly swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. I do. Very good. Then let's start with your name and address, please. Reginald Richardson, 195 Avenue B, Ronkonkoma, New York, 11779. Thank you, sir, and thank you for attending today's Zoom meeting. So, no, you, so, so you had a pool put in with a deck, and the pool has a nice um, – Required setback of 15 feet or more, but the deck um, didn't. Your, your deck is at 10 feet, and that's why you're here today. You, you understand that, right? Yes, I do. Yes. What did you want to tell us specifically about how, those struck, how that structure came into being and how it compares to your neighborhood? You know, um, I think it's as far as comparing to the neighborhood, it's within, um, you know, it's means within the neighborhood. Um, what I did learn, though, is to really um, even the build of the pool, People, company, make sure that the water was beyond the 15 feet. Um, but it was a learning lesson to make sure that the actual builder of the deck was on board with that, which obviously um, <laughs> he didn't because I'm sitting in front of you now for this. Obviously um, he wasn't. That's right. <laughs> yeah. So, so uh, it was that in itself. Anything going forward, I know I've been here only three years now. So I know going forward... Um, I kind of put the carriage before the horse in this instance, but you know now I know to go get the permit first, and then uh, <laughs> you know uh, go on with the um, building or whatever is getting done. Thank you, sir. Let me see if the board has any questions. Chairman, uh, Mr. Mazzarella, yes. yes. Uh, good afternoon, Mr. Richardson. Good afternoon, Mr. Mazzarella. How are you, sir? I'm doing well. How's it going? Good, very well. Thank you. That's good. So um, it looks like the it's a it's a basically a rounded deck coming around halfway uh, to your to your pool, which is also round. The and forgive me, I don't see a dimension on the actual 
um, leg of the pool uh, of the deck. Does that say 2.1? Is that what is that what that is? So those two sides that come around, um, is that only a couple of feet? Yes, the foot um, that come around to the side. Yes. Um, I'm sorry. I'm just trying to get my. So just, I'm just trying to get the the width of that, of the sides there. It looks like it comes around to just a couple of feet, 2.1 feet. I, I, and I'm looking at yeah. that as 2.1 feet above grade. Yes, that, is it that in piece you're referring to that I'm in, I'm questioning, I'm in question for? Is yeah. that the piece you're referring to? From my understanding, when I did speak to someone over in the town, um, they did say to me that it was like two feet. Something like that, she did say. All right, and but when it comes to the survey, and I apologize for interrupting, the pool setback is fifteen point five. The the deck is showing us ten. Um, the deck then is five feet in width, at least five. in that location. Okay. All right. Yeah, so I'm looking at the same. Okay. Two point above above grade, and so how deep is the pool? Four four feet. Okay. I just have it um semi in ground. So it's a semi in ground. Okay. Yes. So some of that. Some of that, so it, I understand. And the deck that's coming off the house is also is two point seven. So, you, so you step down onto that deck there. Yes. Around the pool, it's a it, it's a, it's a step down. Yes. Okay. Yes, it is. When you step off to that first one, go through the fence. It's a yeah. step down. Yeah. And that whole and that whole and that whole situation, both both decks. Uh, even though they vary in height, they were built at the same time. No, actually, the um, the first one coming out of the door, for, out of the back door, was built prior to me purchasing the home. All right, so the rest was attached when the pool was put in. Yes. Okay, and approximately yes. when was that? Um, last last fall. Okay, it's about a year ago. Yes. All right, and that's uh, material-wise, both the same. You say wood deck, wood deck, so it's uh, they're all they're similar in nature. F fairly, they match each other. Yes, I actually had them um, stained and everything, pound wash stained, so they do completely match. Okay, thank you. Yeah. All right, thank you for answering the questions, Mr. Richardson. And Not I a have, problem. I hope I was um, of some help. <laughs> yes, you are. Um, I have no further questions, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Mazzarella. Is there anything further from the board? Does the board have a motion? Yes, I'd like to grant the application as submitted type two. Second. Second. Motion is by Mr. Mazzarella, seconded by Mr. Cunha. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Good luck, sir. So I'm sorry. So that means I was granting up the permit? Oh, uh, no. Oh. <laughs> no, yes. That, that's what that means. The board um, considered the relief requested by uh, on, on your behalf, and uh, we, we granted that um, requested relief. You will get a a grant letter within seven to 10 business days that you take back to the building department with with you and then you can um, eventually apply for your final CO for the deck. Oh, okay. Right. Thanks a lot, ladies and take gentlemen. Care. Appreciate it, board members. Have a good evening. Thank you, do the same. Case number 13, Peter Martocci and Colleen Myers, 400 Grove Avenue, Patchogue, located on the west side of Grove Avenue, 523 feet north of Smith Street, Patchogue. Applicant requests minimum and total side yard variances for a proposed two-story and second-story residence additions. Mr. Chair, I have the applicant Colleen Myers and the James Nicolazzi. Thank you, Mr. Vega. All right, so Ms. Myers, I can see you. Can you hear us? Yes, I can. All right, and there is someone else um, that is being promoted. Uh, did you hear uh, Mr. Vega say that name and do you recognize it? I didn't hear it. It was reconnecting. Okay. It was it James Nicolazzi? Yes, that's correct. And um, 
All right. Is is that is that one of the owners of the house, or is that someone um, that's going to uh, address us on your behalf? He's addressing you. All right. Well, it's very nice to meet you. Let's uh, see if we can bring the other gentleman up. Okay. It's. I was watching all time. Why is it not working? All right. So, so I guess we can hear you, but um, you're not giving us video. Did you? Yeah, it's um, saying the video was failing for this. Oh, right, I can well, put out the video. I just later. Can you hear me? We can certainly hear you loud and clear. But in terms of the video, are you having difficulty? Yeah, it's saying fail to start video camera. Uh, for some reason, I am saying start my video. Coas is asking it, but it's failing for some reason. All right, um, Ms. Uh, Myers, you recognize that voice, is that, Correct, is that right? Yes. And um, and no. is it someone? Is someone that you engaged on your behalf? Yes, correct. He's our architect. You? All right, sir. So why don't I'm going to ask you, sir, if, um, and Ms. Myers, why don't we do the same? Just to give your attention to the board's attorney, um, to be sworn. You saw Ms. Swear tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. I do. I do. All right, um, sir, we, uh, we, we have no video of you, but for the record, you are here speaking on behalf of the applicant. Can we take uh, your appearance, please, for the record? My name is James Nicolazzi. I'm with Arc Street Architects. My address is 1550 Deer Park Avenue, Deer Park, New York, 1729. And for the purposes of this hearing, you're the agent for the applicant? Correct. What would you like to tell us? All right, my clients are looking to uh, do a two-story addition off the rear of their existing um, home. The style of the house is a, uh, a gable roof, a gable roof, and we were trying to keep within the style of the house. Um, as you can see, the site is askew, and also the house is slightly tilted, uh, if you go back to the, um, the uh, site plan. Um, the current house right now is sitting back at 10.8, what we did is we took the same design of the house. I, I sent drawings to the, uh, the board of the house and we, we kept the same style of the house and we just kind of moved out towards the rear to give a, another bedroom and expand the kitchen. Um, the bedroom's on the second floor. My clients have two children and have a third one on the way um, and they're looking to expand the house but keep the same character and nature of the house. The way the house, uh, the plot of the, uh, the site plan is we would be here for the board anyway, even if I, um, for side yard setbacks and total yard setbacks. Um, with respect to the uh, side yard setbacks, there are three houses um, on Grove Street. One is 284 Grove Street, and um, the other is, uh, looks like 290 Grove Street. And then on the other side around the back is 276 Bay Avenue. They all have side yard setbacks of less than nine feet, which we're asking for. One of them, the Bay Avenue one, which is behind them, uh, is only six feet. Um, it is so, obviously this is a slightly different type of property. It's, it's, you know, it's angled. Um, and that's pretty much all we're, you know, we're looking to, to get the nine foot as opposed to 10 foot eight. Because we're coming out through the exact width of the house, straight on back, um, approximately nine feet. And that's pretty much it. Thank you, sir. Questions from the board? Mr. Chair. Mr. Wisdom. All right, so, so there's a concrete patio underneath that enclosed porch right, on, right now, or this is going to be an addition on top of that? Uh, we're going to remove the concrete patio and the the addition that's and, there. Yeah, and do a real foundation, you know, footings, you know, first floor, second floor. So you're going to go out from the back of the house in that hash mark, that red hash mark portion of the back of the house. Correct. That is the proposed first uh, two-story addition. And there are houses in the neighborhood that match this. Well, it's 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 not out of character for the neighborhood at all. No, the neighborhood is unique. It has very different types of houses um so it's it's it within you know it's one of the older houses it's built a uh, hundred years ago um so yeah it's in keeping with the neighborhood and the and site I'm, and i'm looking at that on my on the uh, google maps and i can see that there are a lot of different style houses in the neighborhood yep. yeah it's a very unique neighborhood from old houses to you know newer ranches and ranches and all that now is the it's grove avenue the road that goes right down to the beach to the Correct. bay 
So it's not out of character at all. And there's, are there any, is there any pushback from the neighbors or anything like that? The neighbor just north, which is 396, uh, my clients spoke to them. They were more than willing to uh, come on and say that, but there was no pushback. And, and there's no pushback from anybody? No. I have nothing further. Thank you, Mr. Wisdom. Is there anything further from the board? So, sir, let me just ask you, what type of space are we adding to this house? Is it bedrooms? Is it... Um... Bedroom upstairs, yeah, that's the majority. We we're adding, we're extending in the kitchen and opening up the floor plan on the first floor. But what we're doing is really gaining the space for the second floor to add a bedroom, to make a master bedroom for the, the parents, and then the kids' rooms upstairs. So currently, then, the kitchen is at the rear wall of the house? Correct. And that's why the addition is there as opposed to... Um, yeah. To the to the south side. Yeah, uh, well, the south side. Yes, we didn't also want it. That the south side is the dining room. Uh, didn't want it to change the uh, the bay window in the dining room and keep it the same character as uh, as as it's originally designed. I oh, wanted yeah. to impact the house as less uh, change the design of the house as, as least as possible. And the the uh, the design or the proposal um, as you're showing it to us. Um, it, encroaches a little bit further into that side yard, but you're going from 10.8 feet to nine feet. So it's a foot in and eight Correct. inches. Is that what it is? All right. Correct. Thank you very much. Is there anything further from the board? Uh, does the board have a motion? Mr. Chair, I'll make a motion to grant the application type two. Second. second. Motion and second haven't been made. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you and good luck, Ms. Myers. Thank you. Thank you very much, board. Case number 14, Joseph and Susan Navarro, 72 Ridgewood Avenue, Shirley, located south side of Ridgewood Avenue, 652 feet east of Blue Point Road, Selden. Applicant requests side yard variance for existing deck with Tiki Bar. Mr. Chairman, I have Ralph Osasser for the applicant, and I also have the applicant, Joe Navarro. Thank you. Can we do what we did at the last application? Please advise. Uh, the applicant, then if they'd like to speak, just to raise their hands and you can prom promote them. And we'll start with Mr. Alsasser. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I'm getting sworn in first. Yes, thank you, okay. Mr. Alsasser. Just waiting to uh, for your video to begin so we could see where you are. Oh, I'm sorry. It should be oh, on. Here you go. We, okay. we, we can certainly see you and hear you now. Let's start by having you sworn. Mr. Thomas, we're tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but truth will help you. I do. Good to see you, Ralph. Let's start with your appearance for the record. Mr. Chairman, Ralph Elsasser for the applicant, Mr. and Mrs. Navarro. Thank you. Um, as you as you heard, we do have the applicant um, uh, yes. as, a, as a as a I guess a participant as an attendee. Um, if and when yes. you or or the applicant would like to. Um, have the applicant speak, but just please let us know. What would you like to tell us about the application though? Mr. Chairman, uh, this property here, when we met Mr. and Mrs. Navarro, they had several that they basically had experiments on. Uh, so uh, this, this deck was built about between two and three years ago. It's a ground level deck on a side yard. And obviously they, they didn't even feel they needed anything for it because it was so low. So, and then they put a little tiki bar on it and there's no plumbing in it. And that's used basically seasonally for entertainment purposes. Uh, so when the, the, the uh, brush between the properties, as far as the bushes, uh, you can't even tell there's, there's anything there. So it's kind of secluded and uh, it's a nice, tastefully done. And in terms of the, just the size of the deck, it appears to be modest. Uh, do you do you yes. do you know what the, the dimensions are? Because I don't see them on the survey. Well, it's ten by fourteen. Is it ten by fourteen? All right. And again, on yes. grade with the uh, with the the tiki bar on top. Mr. Cardi showing yes, us it now. Tiki bar on top. Yes. All right. Thank you. Um, is there anything further from the board on the application? Does the board have a motion? Yes, Mr. Chair, I'd like to grant the application as presented type two. Motion by Mr. Cunha, seconded by Mr. Mazzarella. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Chair, Mr. the board, have a good evening.
Case number 15, Cheryl DeGroote, care of Andrew Malguanera. Property is located on the north side of Phyllis Road, 98 feet east of Monroe Drive, Mastic Beach. Applicant requests minimum and total side yard variances for existing one story residence addition, height variance for existing six foot high fence located in the front yard on Phyllis Road. Mr. Chairman, I have Andrew Malguanera for the applicant. Thank you, Mr. Vega. Let's see where he shows, oh, there he is. Let's unmute yourself, Mr. Malguanera, and you've been sworn, so we'll start just with your appearance for the record. Andrew Malguanera, 713 Main Street, Port Jefferson, agent. Thank you. This is case number 15. You are here for minimum total side yard variance for the one-story addition uh, and uh, six-foot fence. What would you like to tell us specifically? Okay, so uh, as far as the addition goes, it's been there since 2004. Uh, it is the master bedroom of the, the dwelling. Um, it uh, fits in line with the characteristics of the neighborhood. Uh, there are a couple, there are houses on the, on the block with similar side yards. Uh, number 10 Phyllis, number five Phyllis, uh, 19 Polk Road, uh, very similar side yards. Um, as far as the fence goes, you know, the, the, the fence company kind of, you know, angled it a little bit for whatever reason. It's just slightly past the, the front foundation. Uh, no harm in the neighborhood, I don't feel. Uh, and if the um, board has any questions, please let me know. Thank you, Mr. Malganero. Questions from the board? Yes, Mr. Yes. Chair. Mr. Cunha. Oh. Hey, Andy, how are you? Good, how are you doing? Good, I'm wondering, when was this built? 2004. 2004, okay. Um, and it, you said it was being used as a bedroom and it's only a one story, is that correct? That is correct. And we have other houses you demonstrated or actually presented that there were some in the neighborhood even next door that were the same setback, if not smaller. Is that mm -hmm. correct? Correct. And we're talking approximately less than a foot maybe on that angle on that fence? Yeah, seven, uh, seven inches to be exact. Seven inches, okay. Yes. Uh, no further questions, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Cunha. Is there anything further from the board? Does the board have a motion? Mr. Chair, I'd like to grant the application as presented type two. Second. Thank motion you. is by Mr. Cunha, seconded by Mr. Lazaru. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Case number 16, Transformed Homes by J&E LLC, care of Andrew Malguanera, located on the west side of Auburn Avenue, 450 feet south of Collin Drive, Shirley. Applicant requests permission for existing half-story residence addition on a 50-foot lot. Mr. Chair, I have Andrew Malguanera for the applicant. Thank you. Um, sorry, Mr. Vega, was that Mr. Malguanara you said? Correct. Andrew, yes, you're still here. Yes. Good, I was just speaking off the record with, with Ms. Ricardi. I've never not seen relief for a half story. I've always seen it in square footage, so we know exactly what we're considering and granting, but I now know it's 400 square feet. Is that is that correct? Yes, we, we, did, we did state that to the building department. I don't know why they, they drew it up that way, but um, yeah. All right, apparently it's not a square footage issue. Um, I'm learning that from Ms. Ricardi, but I would like to have it stated for the record and I'd like to, to be part of the decision. But Mr. Malganer, I didn't let you start with an appearance for the record, so let me start, let you start there. Sure, Andrew Malganer, 713 Main Street, uh, Port Jefferson, agent for the applicant. Thank you, what would you like to tell us here? All right, so uh, if, you, if you pull up the aerial, you'll see this, the whole block is, is 50 foot lots. Uh, most, most of the houses have a uh, second story to some degree. Uh, not all, but most. Um, for example, uh, 463, 467 um, have oh, the, the same type of house with the same second floor. Um, 473 and 469 have full second stories um, on 50 foot lots. So it fits well in line with the character of this neighborhood. My client purchased the house this way and it's just looking to legalize it and, and sell. Um, if you have any questions, please uh, let me know. Thank you. Questions from the board? Yes, Mr. Chair. <clears throat> Mr. Lindsay. So do you have any idea when that was put on? I, I don't. It wasn't my, it wasn't, it, it, it wasn't 
they didn't um, blow out the footprint. They just finished the second story, you know. So, uh, but I don't know when it was done. It wasn't, uh, you know, I'd be guessing if I told you. So you're saying they bought it and then they finished it. It was already built. They, they were, yeah, they, I, believe it was, I believe it was a rental um, that they're not selling. That they're not selling. Now they're, they're now selling, looking to yeah. sell. Yeah. Okay. Um, I have no further questions then, Mr. Chair. You say, you say it uh, goes along with the other houses in the neighborhood? 100%. They're both, there's two houses right next to each other that are the same exact type. And there are other lots on the same block that are full blown second stories um, on the same on the same uh, street. So it fell, falls in line. Okay, and Mr. Chair, you said it doesn't have a problem with the uh, 400 square feet. Correct. No, it, the relief is for a half story residence addition on a 50 foot lot. So that's what the board has to consider. Okay, I have no further questions, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Lindsay. Is there anything further from the board, Mr. Chair? Mr. Vega, I had an attendee raise their hand. Um, I'm not sure if they'd like to speak. I tried to engage them in the chat, but I didn't receive anything back. Let's bring them up. Mr. Malgunero, were you expecting a visitor here? Uh, not that I was aware of, but it's welcome. Okay. I have Noreen. All right, I think I'm hearing some audio, but I don't see anyone yet. No audio yet. Mr. Chair, while we wait, can I ask Mr. Malguinero something? Of course. Andrew, is this uh, basically a cape that they finished the second floor on? That's right. Okay, that's all Mr. I wanted. Mr. Chair, I also Wait. have an Andy Levine who raised their hand. I'm going to promote. Okay, bring him on up. All right, I am hearing some audio. For those um, individuals that requested to be brought up, if you can make sure your video is on. They are both Please. on audio. It's uh, one of the board members or Mr. Malguinero, who is you're hearing from. Okay, so then, then Andy says, I have no questions, Andy Levine. So uh, is, is, you said the other individual was someone named Noreen? Um, that individual is not responding to, for me to unmute right. or start the video. All right, then. Um, in that instance, uh, I'm going to ask the board if there's anything further on this application. If not, I'll take a motion. Yes, sir, I'd like to grant the application. Type 2 is presented. Second. The motion is by Mr. Lindsay, seconded by Mr. Lazarou. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Case number 17, Stephen and Roseanne Bello, care of Andrew Malguinera, located on the southeast corner of Division Street and Priscilla Avenue, Holtzville. Applicant requests front yard setback from Division Street and rear yard variances for existing above ground swimming pool and pool deck located in the front yard on Division Street not permitted. Side yard variance for existing shed located in the required side yard. All right, then, Mr. Malganera, this, uh, you're still with us. You were previously been sworn. This survey reminds me of your survey from the last hearing where your <laughs> shed was up in the corner there, but this time it's a pool. Well, <laughs> let's start with your appearance and uh, let us know what you'd like to about the application. Uh, Andrew Malganera, 713 Main Street, uh, Port Jefferson, agent for the applicant. Uh, what we have here is your famous corner lot uh, situation where, uh, you know, if this wasn't a corner lot, there'd, there'd be minimal issues, um, except that, you know, the town code, you know, doesn't permit um, in the secondary front yard. Um, you know, our client, you know, obviously did not realize such. Um, pool's been there for about five years. It is holding a 12-foot uh, a setback, has no, you know, impact on the, on the front yard of uh, Division Street with uh, Vision. Um, we did get, if you notice, the fence ever so slightly comes off the line um, 
and we got highway permission to keep that uh, on July 30th. Um, the shed is, is uh, you know, standard shed for lawn equipment and whatnot. It is on a slab and uh, um, is barely encroaching on the uh, side yard, but it is. And uh, we're asking permission if we, could, uh, if we could please keep it. If you have any questions, let me know. Thank you. Questions from the board. Yes, Mr. Malganara, this is Charles Lazaro. Mr. Lazaro. Um, when did you say the pool was constructed? About five years ago. Five years ago. Um, and the wood deck under question is the one immediately south to that? Correct. Behind the pool? Correct. Uh, and and it's, it's, only, it's only five inches off the ground. I see that, yes. Yeah. And what is the size of it? It's 19.7 by 17.8? Correct. Okay. And then we have the shed, which is in the rear yard, so to speak. It's a, yeah, it's well, it's it's mostly in the rear, but ever so slightly encroaches on the side yard. So uh, that's why we're we're speaking about it. Right. Okay. Um, what is the shed constructed of? Uh, it's wood frame. Wood frame. Does it have a foundation? Uh, it has a, a slab, I believe. It has a what? Slab. Slab. I see. And when was that installed? I don't have the exact date. I would say within the last handful of years, but I don't. I don't have the exact date on the shed. Any other pools in this area have uh, are located in the front yard or the secondary well, front yard? Yeah, I mean, you know, that's, that's the problem. You have the corner lots. I mean, there's not not everyone has the same situation. Um, lot, you know, houses aren't set up the same as in across the street. Nineteen set up in a way you wouldn't have the situation. Ours is set up where you would. Um, there's not a direct correlation. There are some houses with similar setbacks you know uh that are that are close like four michelle and two farm court uh around around the block are are similar in in mm -hmm. setback wise but not in uh front yard i mean it, it's just our uniqueness of our lot that is why we're here yeah tell me uh you may know or no may not know the answer to this question any reason why that pool wasn't located to the south of the property yeah yeah i mean yeah i i um it just basic, you know, not everyone knows, you know, when you put above ground pools, a lot of people, a lot of people call my office and don't realize you even need a permit for above ground pool, you know, and don't realize just, just, uh, you know, kind of one to live and you learn kind of things. Um, Any restrictions but, in there? Like uh, is a cesspool there or? or? I, I don't want to guess and tell you that. I mean, it, it, it um, you know, th this for whatever reason was the optimal spot to put it. Um, for their purposes, and again, it's been there for five years. There's been no impact on the on the on the neighborhood. I, I don't feel um, no neighbors, no neighbors jumping up and down about no it. One, no one's called my office complaining on this one. So, okay, no further questions, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Lazaro. Is there anything further from the board in the application? Does the board have a motion? Grant the application. Type two. Second. Motion by Mr. Mazzarella, second by, I'm sorry, motion by Mr. Lazarus, second by Mr. Mazzarella. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Case number 18, James and Loretta Girardi, care of Andrew Malguanera, located on the southeast corner, wood path and tall tree lane, Rocky Point. Applicant requests rear yard variance for existing deck, height variance for existing six foot high fence located in the front yard, tall tree lane. Mr. Chair, we have Andrew Malguanera again. Thank you, Mr. Malguanera. I see that you're still here. Another one on Tall Tree Lane. Yes. Goodness, this is what you were doing over there. Well, let's start <laughs> with you. Start with your uh, your appearance for the record, please. Andrew Malguanera, 713 Main Street, Port Jefferson, agent. All right, and we have a fence and a, a deck to deal with here. What would you like to tell us? Correct. The fence. Uh, the fence has been there, according to my client, longer than I've been around um, since 1980. Um, uh, he's uh, fixed it up in numerous, you know, you know, he's fixed it up in numerous times, but it, that fence has been there since 1980, according to my client. Uh, the deck is on the ground level. It's just not holding the required setback. And uh, we are asking permission to uh, keep it neither have impact on the neighborhood in any way. Uh, if the board has any questions, please let me know. Thank you. Questions from the board. Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Brookson. So Andrew, the, uh, the fence is set back from the property line. How, uh, uh, parallel to Tall Tree, approximately Correct. how many feet? Do you know, it is uh, six feet. 
Okay, a few more feet, and I don't think you would have needed to apply. Is that right? Um, no, not in this instance because tall trees technically are um, our actual front yard. So regardless, we oh, all right, the okay, foundation. So yeah, we had to. All right, uh, and the other portion of the uh, the fence runs on the property line to the. I guess that's pretty much to the south. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Correct. Mm -hmm. Okay, but technically it's a front yard. I see. Exactly right. All right, now the deck is on grade level, you said, but it runs, a portion of it runs around that one shed over towards the property? Yes, line. exactly right. Exactly right. And that's the portion that's creating the issue in terms of the... Uh... Exactly, exactly. Uh, okay. And it, it's just slightly above grade at that point? It's, it's ground level, I believe. I don't even think it's higher than eight inches. It wouldn't need a permit if it was holding the setbacks, but um, it's not. Okay. I have nothing further. Thank you, Mr. Burkson. Is there anything further from the board? Mr. Malganero, is there a permission for the second curb cut for this house? It looks like you have a driveway off of both Woodpath and Tall Tree. Right. I, that's that's going to be on our agenda of things to do down the road. But yes, we will be we'll addressing that. All right. Ms. O'Carty has something to add here. Yeah, on the um, denial from the building department, it says highway approval required for second driveway. So he will have to get that in order to get the permit. All right. Is there anything further from the board? If not, I'll ask for a motion. Mr. Chairman, I move to approve the application as submitted, type two. Second. Motion is by Mr. Berkson, seconded by Mr. Wisdom. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. Case number 19, Adrian Faccini, care of Woodhull Expediting, 1031 Main Street, Port Jefferson. Property is located on the west side of Shenandoah Boulevard, 860 mm -hmm. feet north of Canal Road, Port Jefferson Station. Applicant requests rear yard variance for existing outside cellar entrance, exceeding the five foot permitted encroachment, six feet. Mr. Chair, I have Amy DeVito for the applicant. Thank you, Mr. Vega. Ms. DeVito, we can see you, can you hear us? Yes, I can, Mr. Chairman. Good afternoon. Uh, let me please have you give your attention to the board's attorney to be sworn. Uh, Ms. Ray, tell the truth, the whole truth, not the truth. We do. Very good. We'll start with your appearance, please. Amy DeVito, Woodhull Expediting with offices at 1031 Main Street, Port Jefferson, New York. Very good. We have an outside entrance here requiring relief. What would you like to tell us? Mr. Chairman, members of the board, good afternoon. Um, so the uh, permissible encroachment for the cellar entrance is five feet. This cellar entrance width actually is five feet, but the way it was built, it juts out about a foot from the house. Um, I'll show you a picture where you could see how it juts out from the house. And this is what's creating the encroachment into the rear yard setback. The cellar entrance has existed uh, at least since 2001 and prior to my client's ownership. And we're here today to legalize it as part of um, legalization of the finished basement over at the premises. And I'm happy to answer any questions. All right, before I give it to the board for questions, I will tell you that there, uh, the town portal indicates to us um, any age, age violations concerning an illegal apartment at the dwelling. They remain open, the reference for the record, violation is V is in Victor 061635. I do note that it's from 2010 uh, and uh, um, basically it's described as illegal apartment and non-owner occupied. So I would like you to just take note of that violation number, Ms. DeVito, you'll have to clear that violation um, and subject to any decision from this board. Yes. Okay? Thank you. We're aware of the violation. Um, as soon as we have the permit, we will be removing the apartment accordingly uh, as far as the kitchen and just legalizing the basement just as a finished basement, uh, which will be free flowing to the main part of the home. All right. Certainly you don't need a permit to um, go down there and remove a kitchen if it wasn't there with permission. But uh, well, that being said, let me ask the board, are there any questions on the merits of the application? Chairman? Uh, yes, Mr. Mazzarell. Hi, Amy. How are you? Hi, Mr. Mazzarella. Good. How about you? Very well. Um, so uh, I, I missed what you just said at the end there. So, so the uh, the apartment itself is being dismantled, and it's just going to be used as part of the house at this point. That's correct. And we have to make some other adjustments to the basement, which is why they're waiting until we have the permit to take care of the removal of the kitchen at that time. 
So then it, it will remain owner occupied or is it still a rental or? Actually the home is for sale. It's for sale. Okay. So they are trying to, I guess, uh, get their housekeeping done so that they can uh, actually get it up and uh, have a, uh, have a sale. That's correct. Okay. Very good. And uh, so as far as the basement encroachment, uh, we're here because uh, the required five feet is, um, um, is, is exceeded uh, by a foot, correct? That's correct. Um, I have nothing further, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Mazzarella. Is there anything further from the board? Does the board have a motion? Yes, I'd like to grant the application as submitted type two. Second. Second. Motion by Mr. Wisdom, seconded by Mr. Lazarou. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I'm sorry. I apologize. That motion was by Mr. Mazzarella, seconded by Mr. Lazaru. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Again, that motion was made subject to the re resolution of violation V061635. Case number 20, Joseph and Lisa Aquinta, care of Andrew Malguanera, located on the south side of Campus Drive, 218 feet west of Tudor Court, east of Talkett. Applicant requests side yard variance for existing shed located in the required side yard. Permission for existing 672 square foot detached garage, not built in conformance with permit number 04B20783. Mr. Chair, I have Andrew Malguanera for the applicant. <clears throat> Thank you. Mr. Melgadar, are you back with us? I am. <laughs> Very good. Uh, again, you previously been sworn. Let's take your appearance for the record. Seven thir oh, sorry. <laughs> Andrew Malguinara, 713 Main Street, Fort Jefferson, agent. Very good. Uh, you are here for variance relief concerning a shed in a side yard and a detached garage, I think. What would you like to tell us? All right, so uh, the shed, well, I'll start with the, the, the plastic shed. It's a seven by seven plastic shed just used for lawn equipment. Um, it's just best in that spot for the access from the house and, and whatnot. Um, minimal in uh, size and has no impact on the neighborhood. As far as the garage goes, it's not a tremendous garage, only, uh, you know, um, not even 700 square feet. The reason we're here is because uh, the owner added to the back of it um, and basically did like a, a built in shed um built into the garage um and had with with by doing that made the garage over the required square footage it really has no impact on the neighborhood whatsoever it's um again not not greatly over the square footage the height is fine and um you know if you have any questions please uh let me know thank you questions from the board mr wisdom are you still with us yes i am very good so, so this is an existing shed. There's an existing. There's a small seven by seven shed. Yeah, that that's. Um, How yeah. long has it been there? Uh, about three years, I believe. Okay, and is it? How high is it? Under ten, uh, nine feet. And there are sheds in the area. Yes. And it's not out of conformity with the area. Not in any way. From what I can see, or what I was able to see for a second there, um, there are, are, there, are there many sheds in the area? Uh, I mean, there's definitely sheds in the area, I, you know, uh, to what degree, but this, I mean, I'm set, this is probably one of the smaller ones. Yeah, and this um, is a pla it's a plastic shed. Exactly also. right. Exactly right. And uh, what's what's kept in it? Well, one, you know, one tool. Yeah, standard, yeah. The exactly. regular standard stuff going on in the neighborhood. Exactly right. Exactly right. Uh, I have nothing further. Thank you, Mr. Wisdom. Was there anything further from the board? Andrew, when, with regard to the garage, when the relief is for not built in conformance with a permit, was that for the extra 72 square feet of, um, of, of the area? All right. Yes. Thank you. No. If there's nothing further from the board, I'll ask for a motion. I have uh, some Oh, I'm sorry. We have Ms. Ricordi. Um, I have an email from Harold Flockhart of 12 Campus Drive. 
Um, I am opposed to the approval as shed placement makes it impossible to replace the fence and the detached garage is way too big for the neighborhood. And that's it. All right, and Mr. Malganera, uh, are you free to, to uh, reply yeah. to the comment that we just got? <laughs> Uh, I mean, again, if you look at the, the size of the lot, it's uh, it's a large lot, and, uh, and I don't feel it, it does not. I feel it conforms with the neighborhood. All right. Thank, again, for the record, the height of the garage is 14 foot. Correct. Where the code requires 14, and provides a maximum height of 14 feet, so it meets code there. Yes. It's 672 square feet, where the code would permit 600, so you're 72 square feet over the right. code permission, and that's the relief request for that in, in that it holds the required setback, as I understand yeah, it. Is that correct? Exactly. Yes. All right. Um, is there anything further from the board? Um, tell, tell us why you think um, the neighborhood comment that the plastic shed inhibits the replacement of a fence. <laughs> uh, you know, I don't know. I, I would be guessing. That's, uh, that's the first one I've heard of that. Uh, you know, I, I'm, sure, I'm sure you could replace the fence if that shed, uh, you know, it needed to be moved in, in order to do so, but uh, I think that's uh, not much of an issue. Is, it, is the survey correct in, in, in when it's indicating that the shed holds a setback of greater than four feet from the property line? Correct, right, which would, yes. Which falls in line with, with the size of the shed, it's just in the side yard <laughs> as opposed to the, the rear. All right, is there anything further from the board? Does the board have a motion? Just make a motion to grant the application type two. Second. Second. Motion is to grant type two by Mr. Wisdom, seconded by Mr. Cunha. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. <clears throat> Mr. Chair. Mr. Vega. I have Noreen now raising her hand for, for, I believe, the past case. Why don't we bring Noreen up? Maybe she'll come up this time and we can talk with her before I have Ms. Ricardi read the call of the next case. Anthony, when, when Noreen was um, sitting as an attendee, um, was She's she identified not. with the case number? She is not. She, she just popped up now. She, her video. Right. So while we're waiting for um, this individual to be promoted up, anyone sitting on that, um, sitting in the, uh, uh, as a, an attendee, please identify yourself with a case number that will, as you can see, assist us in uh, bringing you to the hearing that you have most interest in, in speaking on or participating in will also um, not cause any delays. Noreen, we can see you. Oh, wonderful. All right, Noreen. Yes, um, I can see you also, and we can also hear you. Please, uh, I have, I've stopped calling cases because I still can't identify which case you have interest number in. Number 21, the one you're on now. All right, the one that we oh right, the case number twenty one, the one we're on now. Okay, so I'm going to have Mr. I'm going to have Mr. Vega then um, demote you back to a, an attendee. We're going to hear from the applicant's um, representative first, and then once the applic applicant's representative have spoke has spoken, we will bring you up to speak on the application. Do you understand that? Thank you. Thank you very much. All right, and you are you are someone wishing to speak on the application. You're not one of the you're not the applicant herself, correct? Mr. Chair, I, I put her back to an attendee. Very good. All right. Thank you. You can bring up um, the applicant or the applicant's representative here. Mr. Case Chairman, number. I have. I'm sorry, Ms. Riccardi. Oh, no, go ahead. Why don't we have the call of the calendar read first? Case number 21, Roland Sabat 110 56, 67th Road, Forest Hills. Property is located on the west side of Grand Avenue. 850 feet north of Dawn Drive, Shirley. Applicant requests lot area, lot frontage, and minimum and total side yard variances for a proposed one family dwelling. All right, and we see the chat from Ms. Langer, uh, who's interested in coming up as owner. Mr. Vega, who else? Was that the individual you were going to tell me was coming up? Oh, I have Larry Davis for the All applicant. Right. All right, so. Um, like yeah, it's, it's now Ms. the Langer. daughter of the owner. Um, why don't we promote Mr. Davis and Ms. Langer? And then um, I think that I see uh, Mr. Davis is with us already. Mr. We can... Chair, I recuse. 
we can confirm that Ms. Langer is here to, um, to as a participant or uh, as someone that wants to watch the proceedings. And um, I'm still behind. Mr. Cunha's recused from the application and the record should reflect so. So I have Lily Langer with us and I have um, counsel uh, for the applicant, Larry Davis with us. Um, Mr. Davis, good afternoon. Good afternoon, Mr. Chairman. Let's Larry Davis. Go ahead. Thank you. I was gonna ask you for your appearance, but you're, you're, you're on top of that. Go ahead, you can finish. <laughs> for change. Uh, Larry Davis, 175 Oak Street, Patchogue, New York for the applicant. Good afternoon, right. Mr. members of the board. Good afternoon. Ms. Langer. Yes. Good to see you. Um, Hi, I have been, you. I've been watching your progression through the chat feature of the program. I'm happy that okay. we get to see you. Um, you have um, Mr. Mr. Davis here uh, to speak on the application. Are you here uh, to participate or did you initially just want to view the proceedings to see whether you want or you want to participate? Well, my father who's 89 is waiting eagerly to see what the results of this uh, proceeding is. All right. So. All right. So I'm going to leave. Here. I'm going to leave you there. If there, if there comes a time that Mr. If there comes a time that Mr. Davis would like you to speak, or you'd like you to speak yourself, just let us know, and we'll swear you in. And let you proceed that way. Thank you. But in terms of the application, Mr. Davis, you've given us your appearance. Um, I'd like to um, to go right into the testimony of Mr. Reed. Uh, as the board knows, and as everyone else uh, interested in the application should know, the board's planner, Christopher Reed, reviewed the application and provided the board with certain findings and recommendation, recommendations. Mr. Reed is here. He's been sworn and will take his testimony to begin. Subject parcel is located on the west side of Grand Avenue, 850 feet north of Dawn Drive in the hamlet of Shirley. And the applicant proposes to erect a two-story dwelling on the 13,286 square foot parcel with access intended via Grand Avenue. And the property is located in the A1 residence district requiring a minimum lot size of 40,000 square feet. And the lot does not conform to the A1 lot area requirement. In 1988 and 89, the town board on the town board's own motion rezoned large areas of the town to increase the lot area needed for residential dwellings to protect groundwater and surface water quality, as well as to limit the burden on public facilities and infrastructure. The applicant apparently acquired the subject parcel in 2012. There are a total of 41 improved residential lots within the 500 foot radius. 17% or seven lots have both area and frontage conformance with the applicant Application, and the endeavor does not appear to conform to the surrounding development pattern. Of the seven lots enjoying conformance, staff found none which were approved by board action or constructed with the underlying A1 residence zoning in place. And further, staff notes the parcel is not single and separate in that there was a merger of this lot and the one to the north lot 36.2 back in 1987. In terms of a potential precedent for other such zoning board actions within the 500 foot radius, staff finds only one adjacent to the subject parcel to the west and depicted on the radius map as lot nine. In terms of dwelling size, while the endeavor does not conform to either the minimum or total side yard requirement of the A1 residence district, the dwelling does conform to the recommended side yards of the small lot ordinance in section 8583 of town code for 60 foot wide lots, which is 12 feet and 25 feet respectively. As per sequa, the application is a type two action. And should the board look favorably, standard residential mitigation is recommended. All right, um, Mr. Davis, before we get to you, I just want to note for the record that the chat um, activity is pretty uh, brisk on this application. I want to assure, uh, to assure everyone wishing to speak that you will have that opportunity. We see that you're there. We're going to start with applicants representative, Mr. Davis. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I just want to note at the um, after reading Mr. Reed's report and going through it that he he notes that this lot doesn't conform to the A1 lot area requirement. There's not one lot within this entire neighborhood that conforms to the A1 requirement. In fact, most of these um, homes in this area was developed under 
um, C and D zoning, and it was upzoned to B up until 1988 or 89 when it went to A. Even when it was B zoning, there was only a 15,000 square foot requirement. This lot is 13,286 square feet and is 88% in conformance with the B zoning at that time. In addition, this lot also maintains a 61% frontage. Frontage at that time required 100 foot frontage. This one would be in 61% conformance to that. Mr. Reed is correct in his conformance report that there are 17% of the lots within the area that do conform to this lot. But what the, the most important thing about this lot, Mr. Chairman, is how it was created. This lot was part of number 203 Grand Avenue, the property directly to the north, um, up until 1987, as Mr. Reed pointed out. In 1988, the town of Brookhaven issued a certificate of zone compliance number 6137 on April 25th, 1988, thereby creating as de facto the lot that we have in question here today. This lot was created as a result of town of Brookhaven action, and therefore we should be able to build it in accordance with um, what we are applying for today. Uh, Mr. Reed is also correct in the 42 lots that are within our radius map, or 44 I should say, one is owned by the town of Brookhaven, that's the airport directly across the street. There's a vacant lot directly behind us, and in between houses 211 and 219 is a vacant half acre lot. Other than that, the entire area has been developed. One thing I would like to note is that when I posted the sign, I could not help but see how much debris was on that property grass clippings and cut trees and all of those things that are resulting from the neighbors. But the character in the neighborhood is the vacant lot that sits amongst all these very nice houses. Another nice house here would prevent all of the dumping that is being done to that lot right now. And this is one of those situations where Mr. Reed is establishing a neighborhood based on a 500 foot radius. This, this neighborhood evolves much further than 500 feet. In fact, it's map of Shirley Long Island unit I. And if you go outside the radius map, there are a bunch of 50 foot, 50 foot lots. There's another 60 foot lot um, over on Oak Avenue. There are many other houses that have been created as a result of the Shirley Long Island maps. So this lot is not out of conformance with the neighborhood and in, in, in essence should be built as a result of it. The one, the one other thing I want um, the board to note is uh, in Mr. Reed's report, he notes that the owner took title back in 2012. This was actually a transfer from his son to the father. The son bought this property in 1992 and has owned it in, in, in the, the family has owned it continuously from that time until today. There are no other means that we have to get the relief requested that we are asking for today. This is not a self-created hardship. This hardship was created by the town of Brookhaven granting lot 203 as CO for the existing house. I cannot achieve my relief in any other way than asking this board for relief. Um, the lot and the house do conform to the general character of the neighborhood. The house is going to be approximately 1,600 to 1,700 square feet with a one car attached garage. Um, if the board has any questions at this time, I'd be happy to answer them and then I will address whatever comments neighbors may have. Thank you, Mr. Davis. As we normally do, we, we compare a, a request for relief such as this for development, both to the um, existing uh, resident residence zoning, which is a one in this instance, and to the existing development in the in the particular neighborhood. So. I know that you mentioned um, it should be built because it, it conforms to everything that was required under D at the time that it first came into existence or, it didn't, or whatever it is that you said, but that's not actually what we do. We, we compare to both the current zoning classification and what's on the ground to determine whether or not there's, it compares favorably um, to, the, to the character of the neighborhood. So we can both agree that um, it doesn't it doesn't uh, conform to the current zoning A1 classification. Our next step is to look to um, to what uh, how it compares to the existing neighborhood. You've agreed with Mr. Reed that there's 17% conformity both to 
uh, lot frontage and lot area was was significantly though um, of that of those of the houses that make that 17 percent which is uh, which is which are seven of them seven lots developed um, that 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 are considered conforming, making up that 17%, none of them were developed under the A1 classification and none exist pursuant to board action. That's, that, uh, that is an issue with regard to this application uh, because the board needs some basis upon which to consider an application such as this. And Mr. Chairman, I must interrupt for a minute. There is not a precedent that would be set here by granting this lot. There's only one other lot in the entire area that needs to be developed. And again, I must remind you that none of these houses conform to the A1 zoning classification as it sits today. I not wouldn't one. expect that they do because the whole area was upzoned. That's why we look at both the current zoning classification and then what currently exists on the ground. We don't, we don't measure against uh, the fact that one or none of the, the parcels were de are, are developed in accordance with the A1 zoning classification or whether, what, whatever the current zoning classification is because parcels have been upzoned and their tax maps were, were created a very long time ago in the 50s or, or, or whenever, it, whenever it was. Um, we do keep referring to um, lot number nine. I see it as a merged lot with number five in common ownership and certainly there's precedent this would create precedent for uh, the development of that lot through a land division. Um, However, Mr. Chairman, as you and I both well know, a land division is a completely different application than a lot than, than for a single lot. And we've had that discussion many times over the years. Yes, we have. Yes. In terms of this lot, it appears as though it was merged at some time with um, radius number 10, which appears to have um, been developed in this in the early 70s. I do know that this lot was lost um, as a result of uh, tax uh, tax arrears and it was purchased by the applicant's son in um, in the 80s uh, from the county of Suffolk through a tax sale. However, Mr. Chairman, I'm not so sure that um, tax lot 10 was built in the 70s as I have a certificate of zoning compliance which which was issued uh, April 25th, 1988 indicates that house was built prior to 1959. I'll be happy to accept a copy of that from you um, as, and make it part of the record. In, my, in, in our investigation of this and through town, um, through, uh, through town records, it appears as though the, 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 the house at uh, radius number 10 was constructed in 74. It wouldn't have gotten a, a CEU, but um, you're saying it, it has a certificate of zoning compliance. Yes, it does. I'm looking yeah, at that, it right yeah. now, as a matter of fact. Could you just read the number of that for the record? What the compliance sure. It's number 6137, dated April 25th, 1988. In addition, in 1995, April 4th, 1995, certificate of occupancy number 177751 was issued for a second story residence addition. 24.25 by 26.2 with a bathroom. Again, Mr. Chairman, the town created this lot in the issuance of this certificate of occupancy, thereby almost splitting this property. I, I, I like think that. I, li I do. I don't. I do like that argument. It appears as though the, that merger existed prior, and the fact that one tax lot, the taxes were not paid for on one tax lot, doesn't make them two separate lots. However, this certificate of um, zoning compliance was issued after they had already been taken by the county and was issued by itself. This, this was issued in 1988. That the properties were held together until 1987. The mere fact that the, that, that the town of Brookhaven issued this certificate after the fact indicates that that's a legal split off of this parcel which would indicate that this is a legal parcel and it should be single and separate from the time back that this certificate was issued and I should not be before this board right now because it has a sufficient frontage to be able to be granted. The logical extension of that was would be that the what you're saying is that the 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 developed parcel at radius number 10 should not have received any certificate of compliance or a certificate for any addition to the house because it, well, because it lost half of the parcel through a tax sale. Well, Mr. Chairman, but they, the, the town issued this. And by issuing this, it almost acts as a grant of a land division. And thereby, if, it's a, if, it, was, if it, is, it acts as a land division, 
it, you, you only need to go back to a single and separate from the date of the land division or two years from the date of that land division, which this property is. It, it sits as single and separate since 1987. Before then, they were merged. It was lost for a tax sale. It was purchased by uh, my client's son in 1992. And this, this is a a situation that is different from just a 60 foot lot in, in, that has 17% frontage um, conformity with the rest of the neighborhood. This is a lot that was created as part of a land division. I don't, I, I don't care if the board did it or not, the town created this land division and we should be able to build- You're saying a, a, you're saying a land division was created because one of the tax lots of two was lost to a tax sale? No. Because well, it, no, it, 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 no, it doesn't start well, there. It goes true. back. It, it goes back it prior. Was, but that's not the reason I say. It was so a new, a, a new way, a new way to perform or create a land division is by, 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 by letting half one of your tax lots be lost in a tax sale, and then repurchasing it because then you have two lots. No, Mr. Chairman. But I mean, lo logically, if that's the logical next step of the argument, though. But no, no, I don't agree with that. The, the logical next step of that argument was the town legalized after that uh, lot was lost in the tax sale. They legalized that 50 foot lot at a time when it was by itself, when the other part of it had been, had been lost. By legalizing that, they legalized my lot. By, by, by taking what action? By giving a certificate of zoning compliance For what? after that lot had been spun off. For what? In the fact, in the no, fact no, no, that no, no, Larry, don't. For what? Because I want, I want you to be specific for the record. Um, you're saying that they legalized that lot through the issuance of a certificate of compliance, but I'm asking for what? For what structure? For the house. It's for a one family, one story, 24 by 26 residence with a cellar entrance. That's what they legalized. And when, when, when was that issued? April 25th, 1988. All right. Again, again I'm, I'm going to hold the record open for that document. You've referenced it as 6137 of 1988. Yes. You've also referenced uh, the certificate for an addition to that dwelling. That is correct for a second um, story that was issued in 1995. If could, and if you could just um, do us a favor and provide a copy of that also, I'd be happy to make it part of the record. I'll email it um, to Mr. Cardi after this hearing this afternoon. All right. Thank you. Um, let's hear what uh, the speakers have to say. Uh, on the application, if that's okay with you. Yes, absolutely. Mr. Vega, you can bring anyone wishing to speak up, please. <clears throat> Mr. Chair, I have Solomon Frazier. I have Sherry and Noreen. All right, so I'm waiting for all three of you to be promoted. Noreen, we are beginning to see you. And Noreen, I'm going to ask you to unmute yourself. Uh, Ms. Langer is uh, requesting to speak also. I think that you're all being promoted, though. Ms. Langer just needs to unmute herself. She was okay. already promoted. I'm unmuted now. Uh, we can hear you, Ms. Langer. I'm looking for okay. the video. I see Ms. Langer. I see um, Noreen. You have to unmute yourself. I did. Oh, now you did. Up. Oh, you just put yourself back on. So I heard I did, and then you went back on mute. Up. Uh, oh, you're off now. Don't do anything else. You're good. I didn't touch it last no, time. No, that's I'm good. On, I'm on an iPad and I'm not computer literate. Well, you're I'm doing very good right now. I'm driving my poor neighbor out of her mind trying don't, to help me. Don't worry. Noreen, just stay, remain right there. Don't touch anything else. Mr. Vega, who else are we waiting for other than um, Noreen? Solomon Frager. Um, you should be able to hear him. I've asked to start a video. And Sherry, and you should be able to hear her. And I've asked to start the video. All right, so Solomon Frager. Mr. Frager, we now see you, and I believe that we can hear you. Can you hear us? Yes, yes, I can hear you. I, I just right. wanted to join in with... Uh, All right, let me just ask uh, you to, to stop there for a moment. I'm looking for the last person that we... Uh, are we not going to get video? Her mic is on. She should be able to hear us, and we should be able to hear her. Um, 
I have asked to start the video. She has not started All right. the video. And, and her name again is? Sherry. Sherry, can you hear us? Sherry? We're um, requesting that you start your video and your audio, if possible. It, it indicates that your audio may be on. We're waiting to see if you can hear us. All right, uh, that's then, <clears throat> hope that Sherry comes up, but um, Noreen, you're back on mute. Noreen and Mr. Frager, I'm gonna ask you both please to give your attention to the board's attorney, John Doyle, who will swear you in. Oh, Ms. Fair, tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you. I do. Yes. Very yes. good. Noreen, um, please state your name and address for the record, please. Noreen Castellano. I live at 199 Grand Avenue, Shirley, and I've lived in this neighborhood since 1969. 199 Grand Avenue. It's right next to the property they want to build on. Uh, number two. So just bear with us a moment. Certainly. Number seven. All right, so board members, radius number seven, which is the... Uh, the lot immediate to the west, I guess. Miss yeah. um, Castellano, what would you like to tell us? I've been here since 1969, and this is the second time I'm fighting. Years ago, it was a baby that originally owned the house, and the husband died, and the wife hated it out here. So they decided just to leave it as it was, for no part of the area. Uh, a speculator came in and bought the house for a song. There were holes everywhere. It was pertinent, but it was a wreck. He bought it for a quick sale. Didn't care about the lot. It's only 40 foot wide. I don't see how you can build a house with the 40 foot wide lot. You'd have to build it sideways. And to build a two story, it, it would be on top of everybody. I, just so the record is clear, I can tell you that I'm looking at a survey showing me the lot is, Mr. Davis, correct me if I'm wrong, I'm looking at 61 by, two, by yeah. 217. Correct. So similar in size to the lots to the east of it. But Ms. Castellano, I did hear those comments. Um, I didn't, some of your testimony, um, I wasn't able um, to hear all of. You mentioned um, you would, this, said, is, this is the second time you've been dealing with this. Yes. Are, you, are you familiar with someone else who attempted to develop this this lot? Yes. When he bought the house, he owned all the property, the lot next door to me and the house. The husband died. The wife didn't like it out here, so they just left it. A speculator came in and decided there was holes in the wall. They were raccoons. It was a mess. So he just slapped it together surfacely to sell it quickly, which he did. Then all of a sudden, some lady came along and decided she wanted to try and build. And we all came down, we fought it. It was denied. And where, did you, where, did you, where did you come down to fight it? Brookhaven Town. And where was Town Hall the when that happened? The one that happened? was in Patchogue, Patchogue, 112. The one on 112. Do you remember at the time the name of the, appli the, name of the applicant? No, I do know that a week or so after they denied it, they sent me a letter and the neighbor on the other side asking us if we wanted to buy the lot because and, they couldn't I, do anything uh, with it. Are you certain then that, that a, uh, in, a, a decision was rendered by whatever body heard the application? Yes, they, they said it was an illegal lot and they denied the application. So she knew she couldn't do anything with it. So she tried to sell it to either me or the neighbor on the other side. All right. All right. And it's the second time I'm doing this. And to build a two-story house yet, they'd be on top of me. All right, Th Ms. Castellano, thank you very much for um, your You're patience and waiting, and waiting to be heard on this application. Um, you're welcome to remain where you are to listen to the balance of the, um, the hearing. Mr. Frager, I'm gonna ask you to unmute yourself, please. And sir, we uh, just let's start with your name and address. Uh, so my name is Solomon Frager, and I just wanted to say I join in with Lily Langer and Mr. Larry Davis. I'm not a resident of the area. I'm a family member as well interested in the hearing. So I, I just, I don't want, I don't have anything to say related to the area, but I want to join in with their application. And just, just 
if I could say some equitable principles, I think Mr. Davis outlined the specifics and, uh, and the technicalities, but um, my, my mother-in-law's father is an 89-year-old man who was recently hospitalized, uh, who's been carrying this lot for many, many years, as has been discussed in this um, hearing. He has paid taxes on the lot. He's had to outlay expenses to upkeep the lot. He uh, is an individual who's, as Mr. Davis said, has no other relief but to petition the board right now for relief. Uh, if his relief is denied, it would not be beneficial to the neighborhood uh, because the lot would remain vacant, where, as Mr. Davis outlined, it will continue to become a dumping ground. It will continue to um, ha have maybe unscrupulous people um, using it a as an area to be in the neighborhood uh, and a place to do possible illegal things. Uh, so what we're proposing to do would be a, a major benefit to the entire neighborhood, would take a lot that's been just left desolate and, and conform it to the neighborhood and make it an, um, uh, possibly a family that can be um, part of this neighborhood. So that's just the equitable principles I wanted to put forward for the board to, uh, to hear and to possibly consider. Thank you very much, sir. Mr. Vega, is there anyone else that you have wishing to speak? I still have Sherry. Um, so have, we, have we attempted to... Um, her audio is on now. Oh. Okay. Hello? Yes, I hear someone new. Hi there. All right, just bear with us. We're waiting for your audio to come up. I'm no sorry, video. your video to come up. Um... He has to start her video. Harry, is, is there something on your screen that you see that says um, start video? Yes, I pushed that, but it says that, uh, which it went down, so I can't really recall, but it said something is uh, obstructing it, but I pushed it again, so. All right. Do you want well, to shoot that video to me again, request? Sure, I, we can. Mr. Vega, can we do that? No, we, apparently, we just did it. Do you want to try it again? Uh, I, I hit it again. This one. All right. Um, you can still hear us, though, correct? Yes. Um, I'm just going to ask uh, you to give your attention to the board's attorney. I'm going to have you sworn. So I'm going to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. All right. Um, and again, for the record, uh, we are unable to uh, obtain um, your video so that we can hear you only through audio and the record should reflect that. Uh, let, can I have your name and address, please? My name is Sherry Locascio and I reside at 195 Grand Avenue in Shirley, New York, 11967. All right. Bear with us one moment. 195 Grand Avenue, the, the uh, radius map indicates Sherry Warner, W-A-R-N-E-R, -E as the owner. Is, is that you? Yes, it is. I recently married. All right. And that's uh, radius number four for the board, which we see now is to um, the second lot west of the subject. Uh, Ms. Warner um, or Ms. Locasio, what would you like to um, add to this conversation? Well, first, I, I'm sorry to hear about the father and and I hope everything is okay with him. Um, my concerns are some in part in what you were talking about, about when a property is, uh, you know, somebody stops paying taxes or whatever, and it's split, and then they can reclaim it and then, you know, uh, build or whatever. I, I have real concerns about that, um, you know, because that kind of sets in motion for others to do the same. And uh, that doesn't really help anybody. Uh, another concern I have is that, uh, you know, they talk about the debris and, and such, which is their responsibility to be having that taken care of. I'm surprised the town hasn't assessed them for that. Um, but, um, you know, 
I, I just have great concerns that this has been built will create uh, problems with, you know, the movement of the ground with regard to the existing foundations to these homes that are very old. I think mine is uh, like uh, 55 years old. And, you know, this movement can cause cracks in our foundation. And then for her to be right on top of her neighbors, because the lot is so small, and to have a one-car garage, so that's kind of making matters worse. Let's not only shove a house on a piece of land that's too small, but let's also put a garage there as well. I really, you know, I, I'm sorry that this has happened to them, and, and perhaps one of the neighbors will purchase the land from them, but I don't see why we as their neighbors should be imposed upon because of this. <coughs> if I'm making myself clear, I don't know if I am. Yes, no, thank you for those, for those comments. Questions or comments from board members? All right, thank you very much for coming out. Mr. Davis, uh, Ms. Langer is advising us that she wishes to speak. Um, would you like to take that now? All sure. right, then Ms. Langer. We'll start with you. Uh, I, I guess we should start by having you sworn. So if you can give your attention to the board attorney, please. So I swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, talk about the truth. Ms. Langer, you're, you, you have yourself on mute. I did see you come off, but you went back on. Oh, now you're off again. There you go. So um, I did in, you did indicate yes to that last question. Let's start with your name and address, please. Uh, Lily Langer, 37 Elmridge Drive, Scarsdale, New York, 10583. Thank you. And what did you want to add to this application? Um, I've passed the property a number of times this year, just to check on it, since my father's not able to. And, you know, I've noticed big home, new homes being built down the block, small homes, old homes, new homes. And, you know, I can only say that I think a house built on that property would only enhance the block. Um, my father purchased this with intentions of selling it. Uh, you know, with the, with the thought that this would never be a, an issue, and was you know, uh, he's paid taxes so many years, and so has my brother, that I'm finding this a little surprising. You know, if new homes were built on my block or people enhanced the block, I'd be thankful. It would only help the value of my own home. And the property is a 60 by 218 or 61 by 218. You know. It's it, it, to be left empty on a street is only asking for trouble. This is a my father's paid taxes for years on this. To, to say sell it to a neighbor for pennies, it makes no sense. It could only enhance the neighborhood. That's you know, otherwise, Larry Davis has said everything. You know, thank you, Mr. <laughs> thank you. Mr. Davis. Um, I'll give you an opportunity to uh, respond to everything that you've just heard. I just want to comment um, the two neighbors that are opposing this application. I want to remind them that the debris that is being put on their property is from their neighbors. Their neighbors are creating a bad situation within their own neighborhood. A new house, as Ms. Langer and Mr. Frager had indicated, would only enhance this neighborhood and probably create value and increase the value of the existing neighborhood. With that all said, Mr. Chairman, um, I would hope that the board would take all of the legal arguments into consideration when, when they deliberate on this and come out with a favorable um, result on behalf of my clients. Mr. Chairman, I had a question for Mr. Davis. Mr. Berkson, yes. Uh, Larry. Yes. Uh, from your perspective, is there a difference between the status of this lot and the 60 footer that's to the west, I guess? The difference is the 60 footer to the west is commonly owned with the property directly to the south of it. So any application for a variance would have to be a, as a result of a land division. And Mr. Chairman and I have already discussed that a land division is treated differently than an individual parcel by this board. And that application would be a different application than the one that you're seeing here today. Okay, I just wanted to, I wasn't totally clear on that point. Thank you. Yes, thank you. I mean, on, on that issue, the, at the end of the day, we would be considering uh, creating the creation of a 61 foot 
lot, um, one through a land division and one through the, an application such as Mr. Davis is bringing on behalf of the applicants. Is there anything further from the board? All right, then I'm gonna ask the board for a motion. Move Mr. Motion is to close and hold, Mr. Davis, again, um, with our agreement that, um, let's say within within 10 days, if you could provide uh, the board with uh, the copies of the certificates that you mentioned on the record, um, and we certainly would be happy to take an email, uh, scanned copy, and that would be perfect, okay? It will, it, it, Ms. Riccardi will have it when she gets in in the morning. Very good, thank you, Mr. Davis. Uh, the, so motion thank is you. made and seconded, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. Um, this is, uh, we just finished case number 21. We have six cases um, left for, uh, in a two o'clock interval, but I'm going to ask the board uh, for a 15 minute um, break. So is there a motion for a brief recess? Motion Aye. and second have been made. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Aye. Motion carries.
Hey, Paul. Mr. Bergson. Mr. Chairman. <laughs> I, I can hear you, but I don't see you. Well, because you won't let me start the video. Oh, now oh, you do. Oh, please start the video. All right. Yeah, so we're looking for uh, Mr. Lindsay and Mr. Ah, there he is, and Mr. Lazarou. I'm trying. Oh, I hear you. That's good. Very good. Right. There. There happy, we go. Happy. All right. Is there a motion to resume the hearing? Oh. Motion. Motion second. Have made. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Motion carries. We'll resume this hearing with case 22. Lori, you're on mute. All right. Case number 22, Arma Paul Singh, 8 Nantucket Way, Mount Sinai. Property is located on the south side, Nantucket Way, 440 feet east of Vineyard Way, Mount Sinai. Applicant requests height variance for existing six foot high fence located in the front yard. Mr. Chair, I have Diana Spisa for the applicant. I also have the applicant, Arma Paul. Thank you. Ms. Spisa, I can see you. Can you hear us? Yes. Very good. The applicant is here with us also. Are they here to view or did you want them to participate? I think he's just here just to be present, but I don't believe he intends to speak. All right. Mr. Vega, you can let Mr. Um, uh, Mr. Singh know that uh, if, he, if, he likes to, if he would like to participate, just, just please indicate that to you. Ms. Espisa, let's, um, if you could, just please give your attention to the board's attorney uh, to be sworn. Can I tell the truth, the whole truth, talking about the truth? I do. Very good. We'll start with your appearance for the record, please. Diana Lespisa with Morano Expediting, 28 Edward Street, Beth Page, New York, 11714, here on behalf of the property owner, Amar Paul Singh. And we're requesting permission from the board today to maintain an existing six foot PVC fence forward of the front foundation line along Nantucket Way. Mr. Singh had a pool installed last year after which he had the fencing installed as well. It was done by a fence company. He was unaware that there was any restrictions on the corner lot as far as the location of the fence. It, it is set back fairly far from the road. Um, so it doesn't obstruct the traffic. I do have some photos that I would like to show the board if, if Mr. Vega, um, if the board wants and Mr. Vega would need to, I guess, take his screen down. Is it, is it, is that photographs of the, uh, of the fence itself? The fence, and just to show that there's no obstruction of traffic for any cars no, traveling we, we, along we, cer we certainly see that it's close to 40 feet from um, in, in Tucket Way, so I wouldn't expect that there would, would be. Okay. The front, the front yard setback of the house is 42, and this is just, what is it, four feet difference? Yes, and that's at its closest point, and then it gets further and further away the further west you travel along Nantucket. And the purpose, just so the board knows, of the placement of the fence is because he has about 10 or 11 um, large pine trees that he wanted to incorporate. He didn't want to cut them down. He doesn't have clearing limits, so he has the right to cut them down, but he wanted to maintain them. They provide some nice shade area for the yard, so he wanted to incorporate those into his backyard. So the fencing is just right outside of those pine tree canopy. I have a picture if the board wants to see. Thank you. Questions from the board? Yes, Mr. Chair. Mr. I have Cunha. no questions. No questions from the board. Uh, is there anything further from the board? If not, I'll ask for a motion. Mr. Chair, I'd like to grant the application as presented type two. Motion by Mr. Cunha, seconded by Mr. Lazarou. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Have a good night. You too. Case number 23, Chris and Adele Kang Deliri, care of Andrew Malguanera, located on the west side of Woodland Road, 2,546 feet north of Marich's Middle Island Road, Manorville. Applicant requests side yard variance for existing detached garage with roof over, exceeding the 600 square feet permitted, 672 square feet. Mr. Chair, I have Andrew Malguanera for the applicant. Mr. Malguanera, are you back with us? I am. Very good. I was just looking back to see the uh, the over square footage of your last garage. Was it also 72 square feet? It was right there. It was right there. Yeah, yep. case number 20. So uh, are you doing this measuring and everything's going to be the same or is someone else doing it? 
Oh, uh, someone else is doing it. I don't. I don't do the measuring. Okay. All right. <laughs> uh, you you previously been sworn. Let, let's have your name and address for the record, please. Andrew Manguinera, seven thirteen Main Street, uh, Port Jefferson, agent for the applicant. Thank you. What would you like to tell us here? All right, we're going for a detached garage. It's been here since two thousand one. It is set back well over hundred feet from the property line. It is not significantly over the square footage. Um, it is not over the height. And uh, if the board has any questions, please uh, let me know. Questions from the board. Mr. Chair. Uh, that would be Mr. Lindsay. No. Thank, thank you, Mr. Chair. <laughs> um, so 2001, the garage has been there? Yes. Okay. What Do they use it? Do you have pictures of that garage you could put up on a camera and show us? The inside? I do. Absolutely. I was, I was prepared for that one. Ha! <laughs> Okay, what are they? Oh, it's only 14 foot high, correct? So they're correct. Not doing it correct. Like Strict, straight garage. Okay, it's, it's 72 feet over the limit? Exactly right. 72 square feet. Okay, there are other garages in the neighborhood that there, are similar? There are. Next door has, has a garage, uh, right, as you can see from the aerial. Um, and there are garages. It's, it's, it, as you can see, a really big lot. And it is set back from the, the street pretty significantly. Okay, I have no further questions, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Lindsay. Is there anything further from the board? There's a board of a motion. Mr. Chair, I'd like to grant the application. Type two is presented. Thank you. Second. Uh, motion is by Mr. Lindsay, seconded by Mr. Lazarou. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. <laughs> Case number 24, Shatima Turner, care of Andrew Malguanera located on the south side of Park Ridge Circle, 158 feet east of Bicycle Path, Port Jefferson Station. Applicant requests side yard variance for proposed in-ground swimming pool. Mr. Malguanera, your appearance for the record, please. Yes, Andrew Malguanera, 713 Main Street, Port Jefferson, Asian. Thank you. Uh, we do see the dimension of the parcel here. You are seeking a side yard uh, variance for the pool. Tell us about it. The reason. Yeah, so it's basically just a matter of the, the size of the, the the way the property is shaped, a unique lot. Um, really, the only spike, but a pool. They they, they kind of want they you know want to do six feet. I I told them you know we're probably more likely to get eight, so we went for that. And um, as you see, you got the masonry patio right there, so you can't you can't you know inch it any more than than currently is constituted. Uh, there are. Um, Lots in the area with similar with similar situations. The lot diagonal from us uh, across the street on 46 has a pool in the corner as well, uh, very similar to what we're asking. And uh, 35 um, as well has has similar. Uh, and again, based off the um, the nature of the characteristics of the uh, of the lot, you know, had it been a normal lot, we would you know we'd probably we'd have the room, but we we don't. And it's not a big pool. It's you know average. And uh, board has any questions. Please let me know. Thank you. Questions from the board. Sure. Yes, Mr. Chair. Mr. Lazaro. Okay. Um, <clears throat> Mr. Malganara, yes. what is the size of the pool? The exact size of the pool is 34 by 20. 34 by 20. Yes. Okay. Uh, any, uh, any consideration for rotating it slightly so it may be more parallel with the back of the house, except for the fact that you might say you'd have to move the fire pit. Yeah, I mean, you'd be up against the patio. It's pretty tight as is, you know, I, I, I see what you're saying, but I mean, we're keeping it parallel with the fence and right. if we moved it over. I think we'd be closer than the eight foot and I, you know, it's a tight squeeze, uh, just the nature of the lot. You know, if there was another way to do it, we you know, <clears throat> for sure would. Yeah. Um, and you say the only example was that lot across the street? Um, well, the lot across the street is one example because of the shape of the lot, almost, you know, very similar. Um, right. There are <laughs> 31 and 40, both have, you know, tight side yards as well. Um, 42 uh, across the way, uh, Silatota. Road, excuse my uh, pronunciation, has a similar um, setback that we're requesting. And um, again, our lot is by far the most unique in the area. There's no lot quite as tight as ours, you know. So that's kind of why we need to ask for what we're asking for. Guys, no consideration on making the pool smaller. 
Um, I, I don't want, you know, I, I, it, it, I don't think, I think even if you made it smaller in, in some capacity, I think we'd still be at, we still need the eight foot, you know? So, um, you know, it, it, we could, you know, the length, but like, you know, the width of it is, is kind of set and it's kind of the pool they wanted. So. Well, we always want what we want, but maybe not sometimes don't get it. Oh, listen, I understand, I understand that. I understand that. Right. <clears throat> Nonetheless, I have no further questions. Thank you, Mr. Lazarus. Was there anything further from the board? <clears throat> Does the board have a motion? I would say grant the application, type two. Second. Motion by Mr. Lazaro to grant us a type two application, seconded by Mr. Lindsay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Case number 25, James Scott and Katrina Leanne, care of Andrew Malguanera, located north side South Street, 400 feet east of South Street. Southside Hill Street, Manorville. Applicant requests side yard variance for existing detached garage exceeding the 600 square feet permitted, 694 square feet, located in the required side yard. Also side yard variance for existing gazebo. Mr. Malguinara, your appearance for the record, please. Yes, Andrew Malguinara, 713 Main Street, um, agent for the applicant. So you're done with 672, now we're gonna to move to 694. Uh, not, I, is this? Yeah, it's 694. Oh, okay. Well, it's, isn't it South Street? No, 694 is in square footage of the- Oh, yes, 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 right? All right, you got I'm it. staying under that 700 square feet for you guys, you know? Right, uh, we see that. What, what yeah. do you want to tell us here? So what we have here is a detached garage. Um, it's been there since 2000 and, excuse me, I got the exact date. Uh, it's been there since uh, 96, I believe. And the gazebo uh, around the same time, there was a detached garage in the same spot on a CEU from 1970 which obviously states that it was there pre-59, a smaller detached garage, but in the same spot. Um, again, this is not a tremendous um, you know, garage and um, it falls in line with the house and it doesn't affect the character and neighborhood. Um, if you have any questions, please uh, let me know. Thank you, questions from the board. Chairman. Mr. Bergson. Andrew, how big is this lot? It's, it's big, it's big, it's a, it's a long lot. Uh, I don't know the, I don't have the exact lot area, Let's see if I have it on the survey. Do you think you could have found a spot for the gazebo that wouldn't require a variance? I, I mean, listen, yeah. I mean, but it's an old gazebo and it's been there since 96. So like, if you were to, if you were to move it, I mean, you're replacing it, you know? So it's more of a, you know, instead of, you know, spending the money to, to do so, it's not a big gazebo and you are right. It is, there is plenty a lot, but it's been there for, you know, 25 years. So, um, you know, it's kind of, you know, a fixture more or less for the, for the lot. So how much of a variance are we granting to this 25-year-old gazebo that could go any place on this lot? <laughs> well, it's A2 zone. So anything but A2 and we're good, but we're in A2. So um, it, is, it is still holding 11 feet. So it's not exactly on the line, um, as you can see. Uh, it, it's required to hold 20. We have 11. You know, you know, he paid his penalty. You know, I mean, it's one of those things that, again, he would, it'd be a hardship in the sense that he'd have to replace the gazebo, not really move it. You know, if it was a brand new gazebo and he just did it, it'd be a lot easier to do. Okay. I have nothing further. Just bear with me one moment. All right, then just, um, I guess for the record, Mr. Malgar, I should say that I was looking at the building denial. You um, you have a letter of correction pending for the wraparound porch. If it is granted, that's you don't need to come back, but if it's not, then you'll you'll see us again for that wraparound porch. Hopefully but you, not, but- you were, yeah. You're aware of that. Yeah, so our, our, the owner of this lot lived next door. So um, yeah, it looks, it looks they, they say it's been there. So I think we'll be all right. Very good. Is there anything further from the board? Does the board have a motion? Move to approve the application submitted type two. Second. 
<clears throat> that was by Mr. Berkson, seconded by Mr. Wisdom. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Appreciate it. Have a good night. Oh, I think that you're with us uh, on the holdover calendar. Oh, uh, okay. I think, okay. Uh, well, well, talk to me about that um, for a moment. It is. I think uh, postponed that one. I didn't get anything. Did we not? We don't have a postponement. Um, I, okay. I was going to hold it indefinitely because we're waiting for an inspection. Right. We're having an issue with getting an inspector out there on uh, that's number. That's, that's not Carol. True. Not true. Well, 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 Larry, Larry's mic is on, so you're hearing everything she's saying. <laughs> that's fine. <laughs> um, what, what, what I would like, to, what I'd like to do with it is hold it indefinitely, so that when you can get the inspection straight, absolutely. Um, we'll get the inspection report, then you could just re-notice it, okay? Absolutely. No All right. So, uh, so that what I will do, if that's your last application, yes. is I'll take, I'll ask the board for that motion now, and specifically, I'm referring to. Uh, Right. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Page 15, case number 17 of May 6, 2020, in the name of uh, Carol Manel, M-A-N-E-L. It's a motion to, uh, for uh, to postpone indefinitely. So moved. Motion second. second have been made. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Aye. Motion carries. Mr. Malganaro, good to see you. Have a good evening. Thank you. Appreciate it. You too. Bye-bye. Thank you. Case number 26, Ryan McGann, 338 Main Street, East of Talkett. Property is located on the south side of Main Street, 214 feet west of Old Coach Road, East of Talkett. Applicant requests height variance for proposed 20.33 foot high barn. Mr. Chairman, I have the applicant, Robert Ryan McGann. I also have a Robert Pestigo and a Tom Maltz. You're on muted, Mr. Chairman. I do, I do, I know that we have speakers on this application, so we'll hear from the applicant first before bringing anyone else up. And Mr. McGann. Yes, can you All hear me? Right. Yeah, we can see and hear you very well. Can you um, please? I'll, I'll get rid of this background I distracted. <laughs> That's not your hydroponic farm there? Yeah, okay. yeah, we can see it. All right, and, and and that's sufficient. If you could just please give your attention to the board's attorney, John Doyle, and he will swear you in. Mr. Solomon, swear tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth. I do. Let's start with your name and address, please. My sure, name is Ryan McGann, 338 Main Street in East Adult. Very good, sir. Uh, the, um, the board is uh, familiar, familiar with the relief request that you've made. Uh, specifically, um, you're here for a variance for a barn that you intend to construct. It's a proposed barn. And the only uh, contradiction to code requirements for the barn is that you're requesting a height of 20.33 feet where 18 feet is permitted. Yes. The, bar the barn setbacks um, satisfy town code of 50 feet. In this case, 60 on one side and 52 on the other. So you're only here for that foot and a half or so. Um, I'm sorry, just over two feet of height for the proposed barn. So tell us a little bit about the parcel um, and uh, what the intended use of the barn is. Sure, so it's a flag shaped lot, as you can see here, and this will be set uh, quite a ways back in that lot. And we'll be using this barn for uh, processing and packaging of the uh, hydroponically grown lettuces and leafy greens that we are growing on the property. All right. Um, I uh, tell us um, tell us in, in terms of the the barn itself. What um, you're saying, processing and packaging of leaf greens. So it sounds to me like the processing and packaging has to occur within a fairly quick period because the leaf greens would then um, perish. Yeah, so we may have, you know, so we may have refrigeration in the barn. We may not. It depends on the volume. Uh, we'll also have a robotics research, kind of like a little lab in the barn as well. But this is mostly primarily for uh, post-processing and packaging of the crops that are harvested. All right. Very good. Questions from the board? Chairman. Mr. Mazzarella. How are you, Mr. McGann? Great. How are you doing? Very good. Going into overtime here. Yeah. 
So, um, you know, we're looking at just uh, above two feet um, over the, uh, the permitted. Um, mm -hmm. Is there a specific reason why 18 feet does not work for you? So I wanted to comply with the historical society and they let, wrote me a letter. I sent it in a little bit late, but I have it here supporting it. And they want it to keep the roof pitch. So it's in compliance uh, with the historical barns of the era in the, in the area. Okay, so it's an architectural issue. Yeah. Um, do, did we get a copy of that uh, letter by any chance? I emailed it in later. I'm not sure if it was sent in earlier as well, but... Um, Mr. McGann, wh why don't you do me a favor? I'm going to ask you to provide. Uh, it doesn't appear that we have you it. You know what? I, oh, I did. I got it earlier. Um, I got it the other day. All right. So um, I didn't realize Ms. it was the same thing that he emailed today. Ms. McCarty, um, we certainly have it. Then we'll, we will read it for the record. Okay. Um, this is dated August 24th. The HDAC strongly supports the nominal height variance needed to provide the steep roof pitch of the proposed barn. By letter dated August 19th, the HDAC recommended preliminary approval of the proposed barn, and they attached the uh, August 19th letter. All right, is, uh, Mr. McGann, do you have any, uh, any um, drawings or anything that uh, what this is going to look like? Anything? We do, and I did provide, I can show you on the screen here, I got all the drawings, architectural plans, and I have an image of a similar looking barn that I also provide with the application, but I can show on the screen here, or share my screen for it. There we go, we got two of them up there. <laughs> So that window up on the so well, this isn't actually your barn, but I'm seeing yeah. that it almost has a window up, almost like there is a second level to it. Is uh, is that what you're planning as well? I mean, there's a small like storage area up top that will be storing boxes of probably <clears throat> two to three months worth of packaging. Okay. Right. So it will be primarily storage, and how will that be accessed? Uh, there's like, I think wooden stairs. I'm not sure if they're drop down. No, they're not drop down. They're stairs. They go up there, but they're, uh, like garage style stairs. Right. And when you talk about storage on that second level, um, how is that second level constructed as far as the flooring? That's a good question. I mean, it's not like finished or anything. This is like a, like a barn, you know, um, I think it's just plywood. Well, the reason I ask is because you spoke a little bit earlier about, you know, possible refrigeration, which, uh, of course, that would include electricity. And uh, I'm just considering the fact that uh, there could be concerns maybe from the neighbors as far as what the use of that barn uh, may end up to be. I see. Once, once the packaging issue or or business uh, may, may no longer exist. And I have a feeling that there's probably some concerns about turning it into, into a uh, more of a living situation. So I think that, that probably yeah. what is what would be most concerning of maybe residents as well as this board. Um, so maybe um, give you an opportunity to talk a little bit about that and maybe then we can uh, listen to some of the folks that are here to speak on it as well. Sure, of course. So the um, this will be like same day harvest and delivery mostly, uh, or the next day. And the uh, farm systems that are growing these are refrigerated, so most likely they'll be you know brought out, packaged, clean, anything needs to get done, labeled, and then brought back in for delivery next day or later that same day. Um, Ideally, I don't want to have to build a separate refrigeration system inside the barn, um, but that's, you know, that would be an option. There's no intent whatsoever to have livable space inside the barn. This is just like a barn, like tools, workshop, uh, and processing and packaging for agricultural purposes. I understand. And then, um, so as far as the packaging and, and moving of those goods, so I see you have your, your, your long driveway that then turns into further turns into a dirt driveway, um, I'm imagining that that will be the access in and out of the barn area. 
Yes. And what type of vehicles would be used to transport the packaging? I have a Sprinter van, Mercedes Sprinter van. Gotcha. And that's it. You just have the one van and that, that pretty much does all the deliveries. So I need. Gotcha. Okay. Um, all right. Uh, I don't have any other questions, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. McGann. I didn't review the permitting process for your parcel. Um, you described your, your, your facility as um, practicing vertical hydroponic farming, mm -hmm. um, a project that, uh, that you are, um, developing. Um, and one of the permits said farming equipment built into eight by 40 shipping container. So in looking at your survey, um, we see three containers there um, mm -hmm. that, that you're showing us that were drawn in. Is this, uh, is it within these containers that you are growing? Yes, that's the farming equipment. So the, 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 it's not grown outside on in, in the ground. It's grown inside the containers. Yep, all year long. And are they process. grown with artificial lighting? Yeah, all LEDs and they're specifically tuned to the crop that we're growing and everything is like AI monitored. It's really awesome technology. All right, and uh, in, in one part of the permitting um, references uh, in the information you provided the building department was uh, mentioned four of these eight by 40 shipping containers. Um, we see three on the survey. Did you determine that three was um, all that was necessary or is there intention to add more? Three is sufficient. Three is sufficient. All right. Um, we do if have we speakers on the... be, If we expand, it'll be to an offsite larger property. This yeah. is really, uh, we're using our, our lot that we own as like a test pilot site, essentially for these. The, uh, the... And then we'll expand offsite. And the plan is more like to put a few containers every 20 miles of delivery, like one in Huntington, one in the Hamptons, et cetera. And then that would make sense. But in terms of this particular lot, it appears to, it appears to be, it appears that it will get busier with the addition of the barn and these shipping containers. And that I know that there's two one family dwellings on the parcel as they are. So there, yeah. there's somewhere there, exi there exists a certificate of existing use for two houses on one parcel mm -hmm. for this property. Mm -hmm. um, the, the location of the shipping containers, though, um, is, is of interest um, to me, because I note that it is immediately adjacent to a rear um, yard residential use. Um, are the, as you, is there a reason why you picked that corner of the parcel for those shipping containers? Uh, yeah, so that is the ideal location when it comes to like running power and also not obstructing too much usage. And I'm able to also get in and out of the lot. Um, so it maximizes usage and of the property, uh, the shortest power run, and allows usability and mobility around the lot. And, and did you consider the opposite corner, meaning the other side of the location of the proposed barn? Uh, well, then the barn would be there. So if you switch the the, well, the barn, the barn would stay in the same location. Um, you would, you would, it's a oh, the problem, location there's a meeting hill just... there. There's like a hill, so I wouldn't really be able to place them unless I excavated out the hill. And um, did you did, did you consider any other location on the parcel that's not immediately? Yeah, I had to about like use? six other layouts. Really, the only other one that would be best would be really right in front of the adjacent the lot next to it. So if you moved it in east more. Uh, um, that would be the other location we were considering. Mr. Vega, do we have an aerial of this lot? All right. Um, so the aerial of the lot shows us, if you could pull, just pull, yeah, there you go, pull it closer. Uh, fairly good vegetation in the rear, so the shipping containers wouldn't affect anything or anyone back there. Um, mm -hmm. Although you're saying there's, a, there's, a, there's some sort of um, increase in the, in the grade um, we, we leveled it out, yeah, we put up a fence in the area. Yeah. You, you leveled what up? It was like a little bit of a valley, and we just we filled it in with, with dirt. And what, what's, what section so was the, a little bit so of a valley? The, the driveway, and then the back part, you can see a rock. Uh, you know, those are like the same height, so we filled in th that valley. It maintained uh, along the property lines, we maintained a one over three grade, uh, and there is no... Uh, increase in runoff or anything. It's essentially would have the same, you know, water flow that was before, just kind of filled in the valley. 
And, and uh, what's the difference then in grade since you filled in the valley with um, the, I'm just looking at the directions on your survey here. Now, okay, so is this, I mean, this was just for a height increase in the barn. This so is just you, for a height increase in the barn, but as a condition to any variance that this board would give, I think that uh, there could be some reasonable conditions um, okay. imposed. And this is one of the things that I, at least I as a board member are looking at. So on the sure. southern end of your parcel, um, how does it, how does the grade change since you filled in the valley? Oh, well that goes up higher. That goes up much higher. So these houses, like lot number eight, that's significantly higher than the uh, dorm behind us than our property. So if I was to put it that, it's, it's yeah. So that back, so that southeast corner is a hill. We actually go sleigh riding on it in the, when it snows. All right, and, and obviously then, uh, you're saying while the grade is changed, we can both agree that the, sh the shipping containers can be placed in that location, they would just have to be tiered. Uh, yes, and you know, it was, yeah, I mean, we, we pretty much wanted to bring the whole grade flat or like at a, a less steep angle, like fill in the valley that we had there. All right, um, we do have speakers on the application. We'll hear them um, for the record, Mr. Big, if you'd like to bring them up. We have a Tom Moles and a Robert Vestigo. Mr. Vestigo, we can see you. Can you hear us? Yes, I can. Very good. Mr. Molse, again, same thing. We can see you. Can you hear us? Uh, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. We can see you also. I'm going to ask you both to please give your attention to the board's attorney to be sworn. It's all this word, tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing about the truth. I do. I do. All right. So let's start with Mr. Moltz. Sir, I have, um, for the record, I should indicate that we have three emails with attachments from you. Um, Dated Tuesday, September 8th, 2023, 10 p.m., November 4, 2024, 13 p.m., November 4, 2020, 4, 22 p.m. Okay. And, and there's another that Ms. Ricardi has. Um, we've made them all part of the record. I'm not going to read each one individually because you're here and you're going to give us testimony. I will tell you, though, that the photographs attached um, are part of the record. Uh, but let's start first with your name and address, please. Sure. Tom Malls, uh, 336 Main Street in East Setauket. All right. And um, what, what did, would you like to tell us about the, uh, the application that's before us? Uh, well, I learned a, a few more things. Um, the uh, Chief Building Inspector uh, Graham gave me a call today. I had been trying to speak with him uh, since we saw the trailers come on on Thursday. And um, I'm uh, just trying to grapple with uh, how, how the town runs farming and uh, what you can do if you suddenly decide to farm. And, um, you know, so I, I explained to the chief that I was on line waiting for the name to come up and uh, you know, I'd like to talk to him and, and go over and, and have a lot of the questions that I posted to you guys that uh, were, were unanswered. And um, uh, he, he said he would speak with me next week about a lot of this. Uh, but he also, you know, we brought up the fact that some of the documents that I tried to retrieve uh, through the Freedom of Information Act back in July, uh, after the 20 day waiting period, I didn't get all the documents I wanted. Uh, on August 21st, they requested some more documents uh, so I could see what was being proposed in my back, you know, beyond my property line. And uh, I just got those uh, a few hours ago. So I'm to understand in the barn as well, uh, he's looking to have a, a bathroom. I don't know if that includes a shower. Um, so I was curious about that. I didn't know... Um, uh, if Mr. McGann at some points decides not to farm anymore, uh, 
are all these structures removed? Uh, you know, how does that work in, the, you know, 10 years down the road or something or whenever that is? Uh, I was also curious, uh, is the variance today strictly about the height of the building or about that he wanted to put a bathroom in the barn? And that is that what caused the historical society to become involved? Or was it just strictly the height? Because uh, legal had said that uh, technically, if you wanted to make a 40 foot grain silo, that would be permissible uh, under the auspices of the farm bill. Uh, the interesting thing that I learned in my uh, short conversation with Inspector Graham, uh, you know, I did take the time to try and ask some of the questions on here. Uh, you know, how does one start a project like this? Uh, Mr. McGann said he spoke to the chief building inspector and got a verbal approval on the containers. And when I proposed that to the chief building inspector, well, he seemed almost a little sheepish like Mr. McGann didn't even have to speak to him. That everything that's going on in the property behind me needs no uh, oversight by anyone in the town of Brookhaven because it's all legal because he chose a farming operation and that just by doing something that has anything to do with agriculture, you eliminate right off the bat because you're gonna farm something, any oversight. So I'm, you know, I'm concerned about the dilemma I'm in now, but I'm also looking to the future and how to press the case with the legislature to get laws in place so that nobody else has to look at what I'm looking at. Um, All right, well, the, I don't know what great, everybody was thought of, many... the, of, the, of the pictures I sent, but uh, uh, I haven't found anybody who, who found it believable that someone could do what's being done. Um, Mr. Mulch, you bring up you bring up you bring up a great many issues, but when you say um, no one can knows what you're looking at, you haven't described that for the record. So why don't you do that? Sure, uh, I have uh, three ten foot by forty <laughs> foot shipping containers. Uh, that look just like something that would be on the back of a truck. Um, I'm not sure about the. Uh, Ventilation units, uh, I'm not sure about the noise that will come from the units. I don't know what the town's position on, is on uh, the atmosphere inside the containers. I don't know, um, you know, plants need CO to grow. Is, are those levels hazardous? My kids play 20 feet from those containers. Um, you know, I guess I, I can look at some of the other, uh, you know, you know, what is the decibel level when, when, uh, when it's operating? Uh, you know, uh, what else can other people do in these containers? What else can they grow in there? Um, you know, I also had questions about, uh, you know, Mr. McGann filled in all of the land back there. Now, the rock he referenced is a... Uh, I guess from the ice age and the way that the water moves uh, through, through eight and the area back there, there's some wetlands area back there as well uh, off his property uh, that when you have a heavy storm uh, and we don't have them often, but when you have those days where you get that three or four inches of rain per hour kind of rate coming down, all of the uh, water washes down uh, towards where he has those containers now and the barn. And then it flows into 334 and 332. That 332 in the lower, uh, well, I guess in the northwest corner, there's a culvert and all that water then goes down into the, uh, into the inlet. Unless of course it's high tide, in which case it backs up and myself, and Mr. Vestigo have uh, lived through that before. 
especially 332 because their entire yard was inundated. Uh, so it's a considerable amount of water, nothing that would be uh, satisfied by, uh, you know, a typical uh, dry well. You, you know, you need a football sized dry well for the amount of water that comes through there. Uh, we alerted uh, Mr. McGann of this several times, uh, but he chose to ignore it. I don't think he's put in anything under those containers to allow the water to go through. I know it is illegal to divert water, and this is a rare instance where you get a rain like that, you know, unless hurricane or tropical storm is going to hit the area, then you get it. Uh, so I don't know if any planning went in with, uh, uh, with the town as to uh, how to alleviate those uh, situations when the water does come through. Uh, but that is the lay of the land. Uh, you know, uh, the DEC has all that as far as uh, how it flows through there. And you can go all the ways down uh, Old Coach Road till you get to Old Post Road. So that whole area back there um, drains through there on a heavy rain. Um, you know, being all you have to do is say you're farming and you can not have a site plan and just start building and changing everything uh, was kind of remarkable to me and, and hard to believe, but it, it does seem like a lot of this is uh, permitted. Um, so again, you know, in looking to the future, uh, it just seems like we need a better handle on uh, how to handle this stuff. Thank you, Mr. Maltz. We certainly um, heard the issues that are ongoing. I want to let you know that for the purposes of this hearing, the board's uh, <clears throat> attention and the request for variance relief pertains only to the height of the barn. Nothing, nothing about the barn itself other than the fact that it is not 18 feet high, 20, it's 20.33 feet. So apart for, for that two feet, 0.33 inches, the applicant would not be before the Board of Zoning Appeals and in fact could build this barn with a permit um, at the permitted 18 foot height. So the board has before the 18 foot, I certainly looked at the, uh, brought up the issue of the location of the farming um, the shipping containers, um, you, uh, you brought up um, even more issues, but the, one of the questions was, what are we doing here today? And we, we are hearing variance relief for two feet height for a barn. I understand. They just said that this would be the only time I'd be heard uh, on this matter. So oh, I'm 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 if I was going to say something about it, I should say it now. Very good. Um, Thank you. There's I someone else. This building a, a square garage type type style, but I wanted to keep with the historical theme and work with the historical department. That's why I went with the barn. All right, we do have another speaker, um, and I'm not sure where. Oh, Mr. Vistigo, thank yes. you. So you've previously been sworn, and could you just give us your name and address, please? My name is Robert Vistigo. I live at 334 Main Street, Setauket. Very good, sir. And um, what did you want to add to the conversation? If you could bring up the um, uh, survey chart. Thank you. I may pull it over slightly to the uh, east, uh, west rather than east. Right. There you go. Um, <clears throat> Mr. Chairman, you brought up some of the issues that really I was concerned, or I still concern me. And um, I'd like to just address those just briefly. I don't want to go back over the email that I sent to you, nor I think you have the photograph so you can see pretty much what I'm talking about. I find it I'm almost speechless that we're sitting here talking about an inconsequential change in a roof peak of two feet that is going to now be in line with the uh, architecture of the area. My house is from 1830s, by the way, small plot. Uh, Mr. Maltz's house from the, is from the 1700s. This is a historic area. So when we talk about saving what this, 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 uh, 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 community is supposed to look like. And we're talking about how this roof uh, pitch is supposed to be a certain pitch and the, the height is supposed to be two feet higher to allow this. And it's wonderful. And I think, and I don't really think that the idea of using hydroponic farming in containers sounds like a wonderful idea. I mean, I see that as possibly being something to be uh, very, uh, in the future, being something which we can advance that will help, um, I guess, 
all people. However, we again are in the historic district of Setauka. And when you brought up where those containers are being placed and you looked at those photographs, my house, when I look towards the south, used to have a flat land. There was a bit of a gully there. And this is the, the area where the uh, water would come through. It's pretty much where the barn would be. And it's the upper level of the property where he had, uh, uh, was talking about how there has a, uh, is an elevated part of the property behind him, behind the barn. But when he put in the, when he started this in the March, he raised the elevator of the property behind me by at least four feet of soil. I only have 50, about 50 feet, 50 feet across the back. One of those farm containers that was placed in, in place last week, last Thursday, covers almost the entire back portion of my property. When I look back there, what do I see? I see six feet of land, a four feet rise. All right, that's, that's the first thing. Then we have another, then we have a fence, a wooden fence that I was assured, by the way, Mr. McGann, did tell us that we would, once the fence went up, we would not see these containers. And maybe that was the case when he had a thought of putting the containers in a different area. But when you look at those photographs, I see four or five feet of white box. This is, a, this is not a nice greenhouse that matches that beautiful barn. This is a greenhouse that's a shipping container, period. White, that obstructs my view. And now, you can see it from the street, by the way. This is not something that's hidden. And the only reason why it's not as visible from the streets because we're now in summer, going into autumn, once the leaves drop, we will see that. And then getting back to the barn very, uh, height variance, this just adds one more element to this piece of property that we didn't anticipate when we purchased this property, this land in this area. And looking back, I see these white containers. Now I'm gonna see an idyllic peak of a barn, nice. but it doesn't work in this area. At least something could have been done to replace these containers, some way to make it so all this would have been unnecessary, but certainly from the visual standpoint. As far as the uh, Farmland Bill of Rights and allowing him to, to build these structures, uh, I don't understand how then that is supposed to, I'm supposed to now pay by my uh, diminished property value and quality of life. We had, uh, you know, we did spend a lot of money and time building a small plot, but building a wonderful spot in the backyard where it's relaxing. Now, it looks like it's a parking lot. And by the way, as far as the farming bill of rights go, when he's putting the barn on top of this one area, which has been a little bit elevated, the land isn't being farmed, as you pointed out, Mr. Chairman. It's in the containers, which means that all this elevation leveling the land is a parking lot. And I don't know about the town of Brookhaven, but I would think then that's a little bit different than just putting a greenhouse, let's say in Stop and Shop Center, parking lot center, we can do that too, might as well. Because then that would mean that that parking lot would become part of Farmland and Bill of Rights. Something's not right here. And I get a little emotional about it because, you know, we bought this house with the intention of having, it was a beautiful spot. And Mr. McGann would agree with that as well. I mean, he has a beautiful piece of property. Uh, it's a nice plot in the back, uh, but now it isn't. So all the things that Mr. Moss was talking about, yes, I agree with uh, uh, the concerns that he has, the, the flooding and so forth, and we did bring that up to Mr. McGann, and I don't know what's going to happen in the future. I can't predict that, uh, but the uh, I think our emails and our photographs and whatnot just voice our opposition. Thank, thank you, you for giving me the time. Thank you, Mr. Vitigo. Very. Thank you very much for coming out. Mr. McGann, I'll give you the opportunity to respond. Um, Great. Obviously, we're dealing with a conflict between what you're entitled to do if, uh, if you enjoy the benefits of the formal Bill of Rights, but we're also um, in conflict with the A1 zoning classification that is most likely um, governing all of the surrounding lots. Um, your two neighbors just um, indicated to you what they feel about the placement, your decision to place these shipping containers where you've placed them. Um, what response did you have? Sure, so I know change is difficult. And you know, like the Farmer's Bill of Rights says, the benefits of farming far outweigh the nascent complaints of neighbors. Uh, this is, we are currently under construction, right? So right now, yeah, it has dirt uh, and 
equipment is the equipment was being moved in and it's uncomfortable right but when the project is over the property will look 10 times better than it was before and provide localized fresh produce to the area uh, especially when people couldn't get it during the pandemic it's good uh, we were uh, complying with all of the grading regulations across the property line uh, and spoke with the town about that many times you had the DEC on site to inspect everything is clear we got passes with all that uh, I was planning on putting trees up uh, to kind of help the neighbors out and block the view not necessary uh, it was a consideration uh, and just also want to state we are on a main road extremely loud it's noisy lots of traffic but, so but, like but, but let me ask you sir when you have an alternative location and when you hear what you just heard does does it make you feel like maybe the alternative location should be considered? Like, yeah. like for instance, let's look at your parcel. You have a t what you call a tarp carport okay. on the, yeah. uh, on the, what is that? On the east side there? Yes. It, that, that's a flat area where, where you're parking a car, right? Jimmy Wisdom, can I ask you to, well, here, I'll do this. Okay. So, so and, and on the other side of that, as I look at the aerial, this a bit, looks like a big garage there. On the other side of the fence, there from that top play, playground. No, that, yeah, it's, it, it, it seems to be a large structure, but it certainly is, it's not a residential use. So tell me that. Where, where are you looking? You, your, your survey tells me it's you have a tarp carport, twelve by yes. twenty. Yes. All right. Yeah. Um, and on the other side of that, it doesn't look like a residential use. I just wanted to balance out the property. You know, if I had everything along that one strip, the two houses, the parking, like uh, the, the containers, the, the well, property. It's, I mean, right I, I mentioned it was a busy, it, it was a b certainly a busy use uh, on this parcel. But yeah. you're, you're concerned about balancing, meaning the aesthetics of it? Yeah, use of it and aesthetics and, you know, kind of everything. So the, so, but, but you agree with me then that that's an alternative location. You just didn't like everything on one side. Well, I mean, alternative, and then I would have the other neighbor possibly on this call saying, oh, it should have been the other side of the yard. So but, really, there's no way I could have put it down. I'm sure I wouldn't get so But that, stru that structure is not a residential use there. Wait, what was that? that? Whatever is on the other side of your, uh, of your uh, uh, easterly property line. That's residential. Mr. Vega, can we put up the, air, the aerial again, please? <clears throat> there's a... Uh, that is residential. They just the guy who owned it was a big masonry guy, and did the, all the large black um, shingled roof structure in the rear and of the parcel identified as three forty two. What is that? That's a multi car three story garage. All right, so that's not again a residential use. It's a detached garage, and the in the area where your carport is, which would be just on the other side of whatever separation there is by fence or or, or vegetation, mm. um, is a location. Um, and you're saying the aesthetics uh, to you is is uh, is more significant than the effect that the containers you just heard are having on your neighbors. And I'm I'm I'd like to explore that. I want to understand your reasoning. Well, I mean, I have all this property, and I wanted to balance it out and maximize the use of the property. And at the same time, not really, you know, keep it balanced. So it doesn't look like it's overmassed in any way. Because you don't want the shipping containers close to the rental house on the property. I mean, it's right. I mean, it would, I mean, like, it well, would okay. probably affect the value of the rental. If this is a flag shape up, okay, so it has the flag part is essentially unused, and I want to make use of that. Okay, is there anything further from the board on the application, Mr. Chair? Mr. Cunha. Um. Yeah. I, Mr. McGann, uh, my, my question is going back to those containers. And I believe one of the one of the neighbors stated that you raised the grade in that area. How high did you raise the grade? In the furthest part, it was like three and a half ish feet. Wait, wait. What, what is the furthest the part? You're going to have to describe it to me here. So in the furthest on, uh, you see where 334 is? The... Uh, southwest corner of that is was the lowest point of the property uh or in the middle in the middle somewhere of their property line and the grade across his property line and mine is one over three as regulated and so the, the it's back 
you know, 12 feet or more. And then the fence is back even further from that. So you filled your property up three feet without retaining walls and did a one on three grading plan back. Was that yeah. inspected by anyone? I spoke with an inspector and uh, the investigator at the time. And I spoke with, um, uh, who's I talking about? John Weiss has been, I've been, John Weiss has been advising me on the project. And he said, you really just need to have a one over three grade across that property line. If you no, do I understand that, back. but did anyone at, at the town verify? Do you have a survey that shows that this is a one on three grade? Uh, because anything over that you're now uh, going to hurt your neighbors and you're going to dump water and or dirt onto their property. Yeah, they also planted grass there. So, I mean, we had multiple rains so far. Um, I can get a survey with the topography on that. I'm not, you know, finished with the project yet. My plan was to do it when the project is all done. Uh, and I would even say the minimum grade is one over three. And it's also a fence line dispute. Uh, the property of 336 has their fence on my property about four feet. So when that dispute is settled, um, you know, we'll remeasure and maybe even add some dirt to extend it a little bit if needed. Okay. Uh, I apologize for the dog. Thank you, Mr. Cunha. Is there anything further from the board? Yeah, to chair. Mr. Lindsay. Good evening. Um, I think one of the people said that it uh, backs up to the wetlands. Untrue. There's no wetlands in the area. There are no wetlands. I checked, I checked all the maps, all the flood zones, everything. Uh, I think it's a, a swell, um, what do you call it? It's a stage four on the swell line or something like that uh, in the, in the, on, the, on the neighboring properties. But it is not in a flood zone in any way. No, I didn't say flood zone. I said wetlands. Oh, it is not wetlands in any way either. There's no wetlands right up coach on coach or anything? Not that I saw on any of the maps. Okay. Um, on old coach, I mean, one of the neighbors did mention wetlands. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Am I still connected or? Because if you put dirt down in the wetlands, that's. Oh, come on. Who said that? There's no, there's no. The I did, Ronnie. On. This is, so one, one there's, this, this is not wetlands. The property is not wetlands at all. The closest oh. wetlands is, is by Seaport Delhi and the Stockton Harbor. Um, yeah. Um, I'm just saying, I, I gotta be, we gotta be fair to everybody. And somebody did mention wetlands. So I'm, that was my question. I'm asking you a question. Yeah. So I checked every map possible. I even went back into, um, drainage plans and flood zone plans from like 2002 I think or 2007 they did a whole big report on it I read through it and there's there's no wetlands and not in the flood or runoff zone at all okay Ronnie, thank you, thank, Ronnie, you Ms. Lin the thank you Miss Lindsay is there anything further from the board Mr. Chairman question Mr. Chairman I'm sorry Mr. Doyle did you want to say something oh uh, yeah while, while we were discussing I did go on the portal to check because we, we do have the wetlands overlays. I don't see a wetland overlay for this area, so. All right. Uh, I'm sorry, and was it Mr. Cunha? And uh, Mr. Actually, Mr. Bergson first, and then. I'm sorry, Mr. Bergson. Okay, so Mr. McCann. Yes. Okay, have you received any notice of violation from any governmental agency with respect to your project? No, nope. I'm actually working with the federal government on this project. Okay, and you consulted with the DEC with respect to this project? Yes, they've been on site and walked through. Okay. Have your neighbors, the two gentlemen who, who lay, raised, by the way, legitimate concerns from a, uh, from a social and neighborhood uh, concern, okay, have, have they addressed these concerns to you directly? Uh, not all the ones they listed. Uh, mostly they were concerned about the grading and runoff, which I did 100% to code. Okay. Now you are here, as I understand it, for a two foot, two foot, 2.3 foot variance with respect to the height of this barn, which other yes. than the 2.3 feet, you could build as of right. Yes, and I, I thought about it, but no, I wanted to make everything look nice. Okay, so. all right. Um, there's nothing here in this application about wetlands, is that correct? No, yes. no part no, of your application pertains nothing. to wetlands, does there's it? Not, there's nothing with wetlands here. Yeah, Are no. you asking for any variance with respect to grading here? No. Are you asking for any setback 
var uh, variance with respect to the structures on the property, the, specifically no. the, uh, the containers? Yes, no, not. Are you asking for a variance with respect to approval to put the, put the containers on the property? No, I'm not. Okay. Mr. McKen, you seem like a reasonable gentleman. Are you willing to uh, discuss the uh, visual concerns and the sa possibly the sound concerns with your neighbors? Yes, and I have tried it before. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Berkson. Mr. Cunha. Actually, Mr. Berkson touched on it. I wanted to know if he had reached out to the DEC because I didn't know who mentioned it or didn't mention it. And I was just curious, again, like Mr. Berkson said, uh, did anybody come out and issue any violations for the grading? Very good. All right, um, it is September 9. What uh, holdover dates do we have? October 7? Yeah. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I'm just curious, what's the purpose of holding this over? I, I hear that Mr. McGinn is willing to um, listen to the concerns of his neighbors. Um, and I think I, I, uh, he offered to uh, provide us with um, a, a revised survey showing us uh, that the grading was in fact done correctly. That's when the project's all done. Oh, well, uh, I was planning on doing that. And I, I, I'd like I to give to the start. applicant an opportunity to have that com have those conversations. Mr. Berkson, is it your preference to that's close? That's fine. I just, I just wanted to know what the purpose of it was. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, se it seems to me that that's probably the major, um, one, one of the major concerns of at least myself as a board member and the two neighbors that live immediately there. Um, and I heard some willingness from the applicant to do so. so um, Mr. McGann, I, I took that as an, uh, you know, an, an honest and uh, forthright statement. Um, yeah, and I have talked. I don't want to waste your time or or the neighbor's time. Yeah. And if you intend to have those conversations, and the neighbors do, I'd like to see that occur. And I'd like to give you the opportunity to do that. And that's why my suggestion is um, that we move to um, hold the matter over until October seven, which should give you enough time to accomplish that. Um, to for just just speaking with the neighbors. Well, I, I would hope that that uh, you'd come to some sort of resolution um, concerning the 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 issues that the neighbors brought up that Mr. Berkson um, clarified. It's, I mean, I can talk to them and hear the concerns. It's mostly exactly what I heard today. I would like to try to settle this today. If not, I'll just build a, a lower pitch shed, but then- uh, That's fine, yeah, okay. Um, I don't think that I'll be able to change anything or do I really want to change anything after hearing the concerns extensively on this call. Um, All right, so you listen. You heard the concerns, but um, when you said you were willing to listen to them, you don't have any intention of um, doing anything to either. Um, uh, I had plans to put tall arborvitaes up along the fence line. That's the only thing that would help settle their unease. Yeah. All right. Well, maybe maybe that needs to be. Uh, maybe time needs to simplify things a little bit. I don't know. But my motion is to uh, adjourn us to October seven. I just need a second on it. Second. Second is by Mr. Lindsay. All in favor? Aye. And, and I need um, the roll call for all in favor because I'm sensing some ob objection here. So um, I've made the motion. Mr. Lindsay has seconded. Uh, Mr. Cunha, how are you voting? Aye. Mr. Uh, Berkson, how are you voting? Aye. And um, I, uh, Mr. Les Mazzarella? Aye. All right, I, I have more than four. I'm not gonna go through the line. So we return to October 7. Gentlemen, I'd recommend that you speak with each other. Thank you very much it for dealing with so us. Just, may I clarify, all I need to do is have a conversation with them and then come back. Just again, you, you do what you think is right and we'll see you back on the 7th. Thank you. Thank you. No. I think we have one more. Case number 28, Paul Seavers, care of Tracy's Permits, 80 Terry Street, Patchogue. Properties located on the southeast corner, Georgia Pine Place and Sip Avenue, Medford. Applicant requests rear yard variance for existing above ground swimming pool. Mr. Chair, I have Tracy Rivera for the applicant. <clears throat> Ms. Rivera, there you are. We can see you. Can you hear us? Yes. Can you hear me? We can. Um, good evening. Let me ask you to give your attention to the board's attorney. 
all this where tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. I do. Tracy Rivera, agent for the applicant. Office is located at 80 Terry Street, Patchogue, New York. Good afternoon, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. I'm here representing Mr. and Mrs. Sievers. Property is located 1033 Sip Avenue, Medford. We are here today to legalize an existing above ground pool that is holding an 11.6 foot rare sex, uh, uh, setback um, where we need 15. It's the only relief we're requesting before the board. Um, as we all know, many applications come before the board for pools, for proposed pools, existing pools. Um, greater variances have been approved by the board before. Mr. and Mrs. Sievers have some um, open permits on their property. And while um, looking to obtain the CO, um, they found out this pool was an issue. The pool was put in after COVID started. They were informed by a pool company that they didn't need a, um, a pool permit for an above ground pool. Uh, you know, they didn't realize that they had to have a permit for it. And here we are uh, before you looking for the relief for this rear yard setback. They've paid a penalty uh, with everything a little under $1,000. And um, it's conforming to the area. It doesn't impose a negative impact. And hoping that you look favorable upon the application. Any Thank questions at this time? Questions from the board. Wisdom. I think it's Mazzarella. Uh, last one was mine. Sorry, sorry, James. Wisdom. Mr. Wisdom. I'm starting to have my feelings hurt here. No, Mr. <laughs> he doesn't know his mic is off. I'm asking him to uh, unmute, but James, your 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 mic is um, off. Mr. Chair, I have a few questions. Okay, go go ahead, Mr. Lindsay. Jim, we, Jimmy, we can't take you because your mic is off. You're not unmuting yourself. Okay, how are we you? We have trying? to ask. We have to ask. Good. How are you, Ronnie? Ronnie? I have too many, too many people talking at once. Mr. Wisdom has come off um, and now he's with us. So Mr. Lindsay, I'm just gonna ask you to, just to wait for a moment. Hmm. James, you, we, have a, we have a rear yard request for a pool 11.6 for 15 is required. So is, is that a new pool, Trace, or is this a, yeah. it is a new pool? It was a pool that was put in after COVID. They have children. Everyone, as we know, has been staying home. They have, you know, they didn't know. They thought they only had to get a permit for an in-ground pool. A lot of companies are still going with the old rule that you don't need permits for above grounds, but they forget that you have to keep the zoning. So uh, they kind, of, yep, they kind of fell victim to this, and they got stuck paying, you know, a couple thousand dollars by the time they're done legalizing something. Right, above the uh, cost of the pool. Exactly. So, so it's holding 11.6 off the side yard, correct? At the rear yard. Oh, is it the rear yard? I believe that, yeah. Sorry. Yes, that's rear yard, yes. And I, I also submitted a picture that shows you that you can't even see this pool. Okay. Um, so are there other pools in the neighborhood that we should, there we go. Yeah, are there there's other, other pools, pools in, the in all neighborhoods, all neighborhoods, as you yeah, know. Yeah, I do see there's a couple in the backyards, right, you know, to the, like, sure. I'm not, just to the south of it, I think it is, right? Mm -hmm. There's a couple yes. of houses on the pools in the backyards. I can see that. So it conforms to the neighborhood. It's not out of Correct. your character in the neighborhood at all. No, not at all. You I see many applications problem. like this every evening when you have thank hearings. You, thank, you, thank you, Mr. Wisdom. Mr. Lindsay, did you want any, anything further at this point? I just want to wish everybody a good night. <laughs> don't, be, don't be leaving us yet. Uh, if there's nothing further, does the board have a motion? Mr. Chair, make a motion to grant the application type two. Second. Motion by Mr. Wisdom, second by Mr. Lindsay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. That concludes the 2 p.m. interval calendar. I believe that we have two cases on the holdover calendar, one of which is a um, previously heard. So I'd like to move directly to there if everyone is okay with that. So moved. Case number 26 of July 15, 2020, Elizabeth Cosgrove Chandler and David Chandler, care of Michelle Petralli, 100 Colonial Drive, East Patchogue. Properties located on the Southwest Corner, Ridge Avenue and South 13th Street, Point of Woods, Fire Island National Seashore. Applicant requests rear yard variances for proposed deck with shower, proposed one-story residence addition with roof deck, front yard setback variance from Ridge Avenue for existing bike rack. And do we have Ms. Petrelli with us? Yes, I'm here. Can you hear me? Very good. Good evening. Good evening. Um, 
Let me ask you to give your attention to the board's attorney so that you can be sworn. Mr. Solomon, I swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing about the truth. I do. Michelle Quatrali, agent for the applicant, 100 Colonial Drive, East Patrick, of New York, 11772. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, we're here representing Elizabeth Cosgrove Chandler, who is the leaseholder of the subject varsity lo located in the Point of Woods community. We're before you requesting a rear yard variance for a proposed addition that would have a 19.6 foot rear yard, um, a proposed deck with a shower that would hold a 15.6 foot rear yard uh, where 20 feet is required by all. Uh, we are also requesting to maintain a 13 foot front yard setback for an existing bike platform where 20 feet is required by the code. We believe our area variances are minimal to grant, will not have an adverse impact to the neighbors or the community as there are no neighbors on the west side of the property and the north side is uh, heavily vegetated. Um, we also have received a no objection letter from Fire Island National Seashore and an approval letter from the Point of Woods Board of Architectural Advisory Building and Grounds Committee, which as you're aware, has the neighbors blessings before they, uh, they approve the project. Uh, we believe that these setbacks are conforming to the nature and character of the community and they have been granted numerous times by this board. So if the board has any questions. Thank you, Ms. Cotrelli. Was this, uh, is this a raised house? All houses are raised at the beach. All right, so then in the, uh, the additions to the rear of the dwelling, how did it change the setback, the rear of the setback? It doesn't, did... it doesn't change it. Um, if you look at the pictures, this is a gorgeous house. It should be up in New England. Um, that's what Point of Woods is all about. And uh, this is gonna be a first story deck, just needs a little bit more decking to this property. I don't know if you guys can see some of the pictures, but here's. Yes. Okay. Um, there'll be no, no impact whatsoever. All right. The board has received the no objection letters from FINS and the, uh, the, the uh, statement and support from the Porno Woods Association. We've made those part of the record. Thank you. Does the board have anything further on the application? Um, is this uh, application subject to nothing? All right then. Uh, is there, if there's nothing further from the board, I'll take a motion. Yes, sure. I'd like to grant the application. Type two is presented. Second. Second. A uh, motion is by Mr. Lindsay, seconded by Mr. Wisdom. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Uh, uh, we you, you're not presenting the next case. I, I see there's an attorney on, Mr. Nugent, uh, or, or are you involved in the next case? Um, Larry Davis will be presenting the case. Who? All right. There's Here's someone in... O'Shaughnessy. Yeah. Well, case number 43 of July 15, 2020, Patrick O'Shaughnessy, care of Michelle Cotrali, properties located on the north side of Spruce Drive, 95 feet west of Evergreen Lane, Patchog. Applicant requests renewal of special permit for pre-existing floating home. All right. So then there is an attorney, Glenn Nugent, um, as that is here to participate. But my guess is um, since Mr. Davis um, is representing that that individual is uh, speaking on behalf of uh, one of the neighbors. So Mr. Davis will take your appearance again for the record and- uh, Mr. Chair, I recuse. The record should reflect that Mr. Cunha is recused. Thank you again, Mr. Chairman. Larry Davis, 175 Oak Street, Patchogue, New York for the applicant. Um, Mr. Chairman, when we left off, I believe that uh, there were inspections that were to be performed and I understand we have some reports in connection with those inspections. That is, that is correct. Okay, the first inspection uh, is from Anthony Bremner from the building department. On July 24th, um, the building inspector inspected the premises at the request of the Board of Appeals. Present at the inspection was the owner's agent, Michelle Cotrali. The scope of the inspection included the floating home and the premises to which it was docked. The inspector inspected the home and observed that it was arranged as a single family dwelling. No obvious property maintenance violations were observed during the inspection of the floating home. Then the undersigned inspector inspected the premises to, to which the home was docked. Uh, he observed two boats 
and a jet ski docked along the premises bulkhead. Mm -hmm. The inspector inspected the interior of the boats at the request of Michelle Cotralli to verify that they were not being used as dwellings. Mm -hmm. The undersigned building inspector did not observe any signs of the vessel being used as residences. Uh, the inspector inspected the rest of the premises and observed small bundles of siding material that Michelle Cotralli stated in some and substance were to be installed on the floating home. Also observed were lawn, for, lawn furniture, a barbecue, and a fence providing privacy for the yard area. There is an open permit 19B130742 for some of the subject fence. Construction of this fence has not been completed and the adjoining grade is not at its finished height at this time. Some additional sections were installed and require building permits. Also a deck and a set of stairs were built and require permits. Uh, also have a, a report from Christopher Reed, the Board of Appeals planner. Um, the home was purchased by the applicant in 1994 and previously was located adjacent to 60 Colonial Drive, having been moored at this location since it was built in 19, I, uh, in 1984. Um, since granting permission for the relocation of the home in 2013, the Board of Appeals granted two renewals for the special permit. The first was in 2016 and was granted for a period of three years. In 2019, a renewal was granted for one year. When the houseboat was relocated in 2013, a new special permit was required, which was subject to all violations identified in report from Craig Lucas dated September 16, 2013, either being removed or moved to conform. Two large box trailers in the required front yard, a small shed in the front yard, decking and walkways in the front yard and stockade fencing. The current inspection revealed no accessory structures. In fact, the property was devoid of any improvements in vegetation. Staff observed fill on the property, apparently placed to raise the grade in order to accommodate a future home to meet FEMA requirements. Only a small section of six foot high fencing was observed in the front yard, wherein the majority of the six foot stockade fence previously permitted by the board in 2019 was removed. There was no evidence of any stockpiling of building or construction materials. Um, exterior lighting was observed on the home, wherein the fixtures were observed being angled downward. Although the fixtures were unshielded, if the fixtures are rated at 1800 lumens, they are not required to do so. In summary, staff did not observe any violations at the premises. Uh, that is the reports that we have. All right, then, Mr. Davis, those are the reports that we that we have. Did you have any final comments? Um, pretty much no. I think they speak for themselves. I believe that um, any assertions or problems neighbors have have been resolved, and they are, you know, there are no building materials there. Um, I know that the open permit for the fence, they are still working on that fence and will make sure that it is up to code. And we would ask for a three-year extension on the special permit here, Mr. Chairman. Is there anything further from the board on the application? All right, I'm, I'm gonna ask the board for a motion to close and hold, please. So move. Motion and second have been made, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed, motion carries, thank you. Uh, all. Is there a motion for a brief recess? Mr. Chairman, we still have a speaker. Oh boy. I forget about that. Um, I apologize. Let me first move to reopen. So moved. Motion and second have been made. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. On the reopened application, please bring up Mr. Nugent. There we go. Mr. Nugent, I apologize. I, after a couple of hours, I forget exactly what we're doing. Um, I, I can see you. Can you hear us? All right. Um, I, I'm not hearing you. Are you? Uh, have you unmuted yourself? Oh, I heard something. Still, um, still no audio.
Uh, there is some change there. So now you're showing us as a muted. So why don't you, can you just try to unmute one more time? Can you say something now? No, I'm still not hearing you. All right. Um, is there a way that we can have Mr. Nugent call? Does Mr. Nugent have a pair of headphones? Mr. Nugent, do you have headphones? That looks like a no. Okay. Are you are you type are you chatting with him? The, he must turn on his internal mic on his uh, microphone on that computer. So there might be a a feature. Because he is unmuted. So he it, is unmuted. Yeah, he is unmuted. So that's something on his side. All right. Well, um, and let's not take a while to fix it. Can we? Can we just have him call one of us? I, I I'll have him call my cell phone. I'll put it on my on, on speaker. Um, is, is there another way? I mean, we've done it by another method. I just don't know how it was done in the past. I do not know Mr. Nugent's phone number, and I do not right. want him to put it on the screen for everybody to see. So if he can somehow call. I don't know how he can call. Well, Mr. Nugent, can you can you hear us? All right. So th can, there's a there's a chat can. feature on this. If you want to type your phone number into the chat feature, I'll be happy to call you with my cell phone. We can send him a phone number to call. Um, but we need um, we kind of, we need his phone number. Phone number's right on the screen. His phone number's right on the screen. Okay, I'm calling you. Only we can see that? Yeah. Well, what else can I do? I want to move us along here. It's not my preference. All right, Mr. Nugent, so I can hear you. All right, my only question is, can anyone else hear Mr. Nugent except for me? No, I cannot. Uh, no one can hear us. Mr. Chair, I'm receiving a uh, phone number he can call with All a right. meeting. All right, um, just bear with me a second. And I can send it through through chat. So, so you can hear that, Mr. Nugent. All right. Um, I have so that so that Mr. Vega is going to send you a phone number directly um, and just dial it when you when you get it. He'll give you further direction. All right. Oh. Mr. Nugent, did you receive all three of those? The phone number is the first one, the webinar ID, and then the password. Thank you. 
So, Mr. Nugent, I, I think you can hear me. So you're gonna you're gonna put in the phone number that be, begins with the 703. It's gonna ask you to to punch in a webinar ID with the and then it's gonna ask you for the password. Once all that stuff is put in, I can see that you're up here and then I can bring you in. Mr. Nugent, I'm going to I'm going to tell you the number again if you have a pen. So the phone number is 301 715 8592. Then the webinar ID, which is going to ask you next is 820 6256 6415. And the password is 566191. Larry, Larry, I will give you the option of, um, sorry, no video. I will give you the option if you want um, just to hold over to the next hearing. Um, it's not going to affect anything, the boat's there. I, I think you're on mute now because I'm not hearing. I would, I would prefer oh. not to. Oh, no, that's fine. I do want just to give you the option either way. No, thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. I wish we knew what stage Mr. Nugent was on. I don't know if he's using his office phone or if he's using his cell phone. Anthony, are you having any communication with him back and forth on any of the? I'm not having any communication with him. I'm having communication with upstairs. Okay, all right. But so we don't know where um, where he is with regard to the direction he's been given. I have given him all the information he needs. Here we go. Mm, no, not him.
Okay, Chairman, I have um, Mr. Nugent on on the phone right now. Yes. Okay, go ahead. I'm not getting any volume on that. I mean, it... if he if he wants to use, I can call him on his cell phone and walk him through the process on his office phone that's right behind him. I'm gonna try I, that. I say whatever, go with whatever will work the quickest. Seems like he's using his office phone. Chairman, Mr. Chairman, can you hear me? Mr. Burson. I, while we're waiting, I was just wondering, do we have to move to reopen to allow him to participate? It did. Close? Oh, you did? We did yeah. move to re Okay, I'm sorry. I just uh, expected it to happen quicker. <laughs> no, no, I understand. I understand. That wasn't my point. I just didn't. It was so long ago. It. I'm surprised I remembered that I reopened. <laughs> Mr. Chair, Public Information Department's on the phone with him trying. Very good. Um, I wish there was something for us, us for us to do. I'm going to ask the board if we could just. Uh, are you? Do I have more than a quorum with us? Yes. Um, 
I'm going to ask, hopefully you can all hear me. Um, I'm going to ask if you could just turn to page, oh, page 18 of today's agenda. Um, cases three to six A of July 11, 2018, the name of landmark properties of Suffolk LTD. Um, I'm going to move to uh, adjourn the matter to October 21st for, no. I'm sorry, Ms. Recording. Setting it. Okay. M motion is to reopen uh, that matter for October 21st, 2020, for the purpose um, of the board conducting a hearing for the reconsideration to reconsider revocation of variances previously granted the applicant. I just need a second on that motion. Second. Oh. Motion and second have been made. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Uh, there's nothing left on our agenda that we can do until we hear from Mr. Nugent. Um, I'm, you don't, I'm actually. I'm now back to recusal, Mr. Chair. <laughs> uh, on which, on which application? Well, did Rick recuse on this? On Mr. Davis. You want to see? Okay. Oh, Mr. Davis is. Oh, yes. Um, okay. Yeah, I'm still here. We're, we're back to recusal. That's right, Mr. Mr. Cunha. I'm slow. You, 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 uh, you unrecuse and then now recuse because we're back to uh, this application. Oh, Shaughnessy. We're back to our only case. Yes. The only one. This has never happened where we. This happens at the end of the calendar, usually in the middle, and then we just come back. Understood. He's on the phone with them now. Here we go. I got him. All right. Nice work um, to all of you that accomplished that. Thank you. Miss Lindsay, you did nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Should be able to, Mr. Nugent, can you hear us? We still can't hear you, Mr. Nugent. Can you hear us? Can you hear me now? Yes, we can. Oh, oh, oh. we've got this. Uh, now he's here. He's fine. I muted him. All right, so you hit the mute button. All right, Mr. Nugent, so you, can you hear us? Yes. All right, very good. So, so just your appearance for the record, please. Of Rosemary Perry, Glenn Nugent, 31 Green Avenue, Amityville, New York. Yeah, that's not going to work. Oh, no. Just he can we can stop his video. Okay, we know he's there. So, can you hear us, Mr. Newton? Yes. Okay. So just use the telephone feature, and you can sign off. I I can sign you off. Hold on. Yeah, sign him off the hearing, and then you should uh -huh. be able to. Okay. Okay. Should, Mr. Nugent, you can hear us. Yes. Okay. Everybody can hear him clearly. Yes, that's much better. All right. So, Mr. Nugent, just uh, your uh, your appearance for the record again, please. For Rosemary Perry, Glenn Nugent, 31 Green Avenue, Amityville, New York. Thank you, Mr. Nugent. And you, uh, good evening. You've uh, you've managed to get on here. So now, uh, please um, let us uh, know what you want the board to hear concerning the application. Okay. I, I, I appreciate the time, and uh, I, I appear for Rosemary Perry, who resides across the the, the creek from the subject premises. She resides at 15 Harborside Court, East Patchog. I, I know the record is complete as the previous approval meeting uh, minutes were adopted into this. And I, I just want to reiterate, and I, I apologies for you if you think it's unnecessary to do so. This, this property is, is residential area, it is being used as commercial uh, property. Um, the, the previous gentleman had indicated that the, the history of the approvals, it, it having been relocated from 60 Colonial Drive, that prior address from where it resided for, uh, for its, where it was moored for many years was is Marine District. This is a residential district. And the use is not incidental to the primary use of the property. Primary use of the property, obviously, it's, it's a vacant lot. 
may have been cleaned up in the in the subsequent uh, since the original hearing, but still in all, it's a it's a residential lot, um, and this is a business purpose. Uh, the applicant is is cited as uh, as Mr. O'Shaughnessy. Apparently, title to the property has changed since the approval. It's now in the in the name of Cool Change Inc. Um, I understand now that there's a building permit application existing for the development of the lot, it's, but it's not developed. It's it's a single family lot. There's been no uh, other than a per permit taking been taken out. There's no uh, sign of any uh, uh, development of the lot. And again, it's a business purpose only, which is not incidental to its primary use. So, for those reasons, um, we uh, object to the use of the uh, lot. And, and again. To reiterate, we believe it, it looks unsightly and uh, decreases the market value of the, of the surrounding properties, including that of my client. So thank you for listening to me. All right, then. Thank you, Mr. Nugent. Mr. Davis, did you have responsive comments? No, I believe that was just a reiteration of the first hearing that we had. And, uh, you know, it was a lot of time wasted for to hear the same thing and no new comments. So I'm a little a little put off by that. But other than that, um, I believe that the application is a clean application and should be renewed um, based on the inspection reports by both uh, Mr. Reed and Mr. Bremner from the building department. And, he, and I know that uh, they are in the process of getting a building permit for a primary structure there. So uh, we would ask that the board continue to allow the use as it exists. All right, thank you. I'm gonna make the same motion then. A uh, motion is to close and hold. Is there a second? So moved. Second, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Motion for brief recess, please. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks. Are we going to executive now? Um, yeah, the motion was for recess. Is there a second on it? Yeah, second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Do you want us to go directly to the executive session link? Please. I guess he just left. Okay. Bye, I guess. Are we going to the executive? So, Ronnie, you're going to the executive session, yes. Okay, thank you.
Hey, Michelle, I'm back. All right, who are we missing? Oh, Howard and Matt, yeah, Matt's, Matt's email. It's probably 40 ago for you. I have one, two, three, four, five, five six. six. So you don't have to sit hard, keep sharing it, the screen anymore. Is it Cunha? Thank you. There he is, and Lori's here. Okay, board members, there is a motion to resume the hearing. So moved. So moved. Motion second have been made, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed motion carries, turning to today's worksheet. Page number two, case number four, in the name of Grace Poffenbarger. Does the board have a motion? Yes, Mr. Chair, I move to grant uh, as uh, with standard residential mitigation measures, type two action. Thank you. Motion by Mr. Cunha, seconded by Mr. Lindsay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries to page 14. Case number, these are holdovers, case number 43 of July 15, 2020, in the name of Patrick O'Shaughnessy. Does the board have a motion? Uh, Mr. Chairman, I move to grant the application for a special permit for one year. Motion is by Mr. Berkson. Second. Seconded by Mr. Lindsay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Abstain. Recuse. The record should reflect that Mr. Cunha has abstained. Mr. Lazaro and Mr. Mazzarella have abstained. Motion carries four in favor, two abstentions, one recusal. Turning to page 19. 19. Uh, under request for grant extension, case 44 of August 22, 2018, in the name of Winton Ingraham. Does the board have a motion? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Prior grant of 8-22-2018 is extended for a period of six months to expire 2-22-2021. That motion is by Mr. Lazarou. Second. Seconded by Mr. Mazzarella. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion <clears throat> carries under extension of time to file covenants. Case 36 of August 7, 2019, in the name of Justin Van Fleet, does the board have a motion? Yes, Mr. Chairman. The time to file the covenants is extended for a period of three months from date of the letter. Motion is by Mr. Lazarou. Second. Seconded by Mr. Mazzarella. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. To page 41. Cases 47 through 48 of July 15, 2020, in the name of Robert Friedel. Does the board have a motion? Yes, Mr. Chair. Uh, unlisted action, negative declaration, granted as presented, subject to highway work permit for required improvements to Strong's Lane. Second. Subject to a cross access and maintenance agreement for existing driveway to be shared by both parcels. An alternative location for parcel access is prohibited due to significant oak trees within the panhandle of Lot B. Second. Motion is by Mr. Lindsay, seconded by Mr. Cunha. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. On the bottom of the same page, case 20 of uh, January 22, 2020, also in the name of Robert Friedel, does the board have a motion? Yes, Mr. Chair. Motion to dismiss. Second. Motion by Mr. Lindsay, seconded by Mr. Cunha. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Turning to page 22, case 11 of June 3, 2020, in the name of Michael and Sally McCrelly. Does the board have a motion? Yes, Mr. Chair. Type 2 action. Granted as revised survey dated July 9th, 2020. Second. Height variance for PV for four foot PVC fence located within 30 feet of radius of intersection denied. 
application is directed to reduce the height of existing fence in the intersection radius to the permitted two and a half feet or removal or remove same. Second. Motion is by Mr. Lindsay, seconded by Mr. Cunha. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Opposed. Abstain. Abstain. Oh, right? Wrong one. Wrong All one. right. So the record should reflect that Mr. Lazaru has abstained, Mr. Mazzarella has abstained. Motion carries. I'm going to take it five in favor with two abstentions. And uh, we'll move now to the bottom <laughs> of the page, case, case seven of uh, April 20. April 22, 2020, in the name of Thomas Neathart. Does the board have a motion? Yes, Mr. Chair. Type two action, granted as presented. No backlighting. Illumination shall be via gooseneck or ground lights. The latter of, the, the latter of which shall be pointed away from public roadway and shall not exceed 40 watts. Application to file a final CO, CFO for detached garage, permit number 18, B as in boy, 115477, within 60 days of filing of this decision with the Office of Town Clerk. Second. Motion is by Mr. Lindsay, seconded by Mr. Cunha. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Opposed. Oh. The record will reflect that Mr. Berkson is opposed, Mr. Lazaru abstains, Mr. Mazzarella abstains. Motion carries four in favor with one opposed and two abstaining. Uh, turning to page 23, case 24 of February 19, 2020, in the name of Francis Petrinani III, does the board have a motion? Yes, Mr. Chair. Granted. Again, Mr. Lindsay. Granted type okay. two. Granted in part, remain or deny pursuant to fact, findings of facts and conclusions. Motion by Mr. Lindsay. Second. Second by Mr. Wisdom. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any Aye. opposed? The record should reflect that Mr. Cunha has abstained. Mr. Mazzarella has abstained. Motion carries five in favor with two abstentions. Finally, board members, two page 24. Case 11 of November 28, 2018, the name of Gabrielli Horseblock Associates, LLC, does the board have a motion? Yes, Mr. Chair. It is a type two action granted as amended as per revised site plan of H2M Architects, last updated 2519 to eliminate relief for outdoor storage screening on the north side of the parcel and to add 40 land bank parks, parking spaces. Arterial buffers shall be a minimum of 50 feet all and all storage and display to be located a minimum of 50 feet from the southern property line. Fuel site to be utilized solely for vehicles owned and leased by the applicant. Mo motion is by Mr. Cunha, seconded by. Second. I'll take it by Mr. Wisdom. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Um, I understand that Mr. Lazaru, Mr. Mezzarello both abstained. Motion carries five in favor with two abstentions. Finally, board members, case number 12, also in the name of Gabrielli Horseblock Associates, LLC, does the board have a motion? Yes, Mr. Chair, it's a type two action granted as amendment amended to eliminate request for relief for ground sign on northern side, uh, northern side of parcel, detached ground sign on south side of parcel to be a maximum of 30 feet in height, and 135 square feet in area. Motion by Mr. Cunha. Seconded by Mr. Wisdom. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Abstain. Abstain. It should reflect that Mr. Lazarus is abstained, Mr. Mazzarella is abstained. Motion carries five in favor with two abstentions. With that said, at 7.15 p.m., does the board have a motion to adjourn? Well, adjourn. So move. Motion and second have been made. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion Good night, carries. everyone. Take care. Good night. Bye-bye. Good night, Mr. Chairman. Good night, so Mr. we're done. <laughs> we can end it.